Let the chaos reign. Chaos Reign presents Heterophobia broadcast September the 8th, 2019. Enjoy. Talk Real Solutions hosted by Tyrone Thompson at TalkRealSolutions.com are the views of Tyrone Thompson and do not reflect the views of TalkRealSolutions.com, YouTube, or etc. The content here belongs to Talk Real Solutions and its many contributors. Views and opinions expressed by all contributors belong to them and not TalkRealSolutions.com or Tyrone Thompson, the host, or etc. All data and information provided on the site is for informational purposes only. Talk Real Solutions makes no representations as to accuracy, completeness, correctness, suitability, or validity of any information on this site and will not be liable for any errors, omissions, or delays in this information or any losses, injuries, or damages arising from its display or use. All information is provided on an as-is basis. In a world where there's crime, oppression, violence, rape, murder, theft, and all forms of atrocities that plague the world we live in today, what you're witnessing, we're living in a state of chaos, and it'll take a greater or much extreme chaos, restored order in which we live in today. Hello, black people. This is Cassie here. And tonight, tonight, it's been a while. I'm going to go into on certain subject matters that's going to be, you know, quenching. Some people are not going to like it, you know. And I have my favorite guest, like always, that is the most not hated person on YouTube, but just in general because the man I have as a guest, when it comes to information and his stance on, you know, this LGBT nonsense, he goes in. That's all I got to know. The call number for tonight's show is 712-770-4160. The access code, 915-411-POUND. I repeat, 712-770-4160. Access code, 915-411-POUND. And before we start, I would like everybody to go to TalkRealSolutions.com. In TalkRealSolutions.com, you'll see a three-point plan for Black Empowerment, Black Achievement, and under the three-point plan, you will see a list of black established-owned banks located here in the United States of America. Um, the website reveals all banks and its locations. Also on the website, you will find the latest articles and news 
and events that plague in here in the West and pretty much outside the West, outside the borders of America. Also, you can find all episodes, including this one, on Talk World Solutions on YouTube. If you miss any episode or previous broadcast, you go straight to the YouTube, except all recordings are there, so you don't miss a beat on shows like my show, ABC, or just anybody else that does shows on TRS, Talk with Solutions. Um, and that's pretty much it. And like I always call in, you know, I'll be open lines. But before we go, I would like to say um, one of a great African president transition. I believe it was a Friday. Uh, let me double check. And the president name was Robert Mugabe. He died at 95 years old. And it's funny how you know. I think one person said Tariq <laughs> make it seem like it was like a like somebody was assassinated or like a big man, like great man, like where Robert Mugabe was gone. But when I look at his life and how he has helped the people of his homeland, um, Zimbabwe, was honorable. Um, and with the help, and people didn't know that Bob Marley helped contribute into the revolution that, you know, I think put Robert Mugabe in office or helped got him in office. Because if I could double check, he was prime minister from 1980 to 1987 and who 1987 to 2017. So that's a period of 30, damn, that's a period of 37 years. Not including the, the first seven years he did. In total, it was 37 years he's been president of Zimbabwe, ironically. So it made sense when he was when he stepped down back in 2017 and then two years later he transitioned. Was well, not really surprising because the man lived actually a full life probably full life than most people that wish to see live close to 100 years old. He stopped at 95, which is not bad. So, you know, give I give salutes to the president and now an uh, elder that's in, you know, with the ancestors. So, you know, let's give him that praise and respect. Okay. Um, before I start, the title Night show. Those who want to know. And let me refresh my my screen so I can see the title. All right. Okay. I'm gonna have to type it up. Where is it? Okay. The title for tonight's show: Chaos Rain presents Heterophobia. Now, why titles heterophobia? As y'all know, and wait, before I start, let me open my line up now. Brother Dawa, you there? Let me see. Oh, he dropped? Hold on a second. All right, let me do this. Brother Dawa, you there? I'm here, bro. Okay. All right. Before we go into tonight's discussion, Darwin, let me read the definition of heterophobia because, you know, like always, this is something of a learning channel, and I don't want to use some terms that people don't, are not familiar with. So as I find the, the word, and people know so there's, there, there is definition of this that not been talked about. And oh, heterophobia through this definition. It's a term, heterophobia is something or sometimes used to describe reverse discrimination or a negative attitude towards heterosexual people and opposite sex relationships. The scientific and the heterophobics in science or sexology is restricted to few research, notably to those who question Alfred Kinsey's sex research to date. The existence of 
extent of heterophobic or heterophobia is most unrecognized by sexologists. Beyond sexology, there is no consensus as to the meaning of the term because it is also used to mean fear of the opposite, such as Pira Andre Tophi, the force of prejudice on the racism and the double of 24, uh, 2001. Reference to the debate of both meaning of use of Sonny lecture Raymond J. Noen in his 1999 presentation of the Society of the Scientific Study of Sexuality, SSSSS, and the American Association of Sex Education Council of Therapists, AASECT Conference State. The term heterophobia is confusing for some people for seven, several reasons. On the one hand, some look at it as just another of many Me Too social constructs that have a rise in the precedences of victimology. In extent or in recent decades, many of us recall John Money, 1995 critics of the ascendancy of victimology and the negative impact on sexual science. Others looked at it as parallelism between heterophobia and homophobia and suggest that the former trivials of the later for others, it is merely a curious or parallel construction word game. But for others still, it is part of both the recognition of politicizing of heterosexuality or heterosexuals, cultural interest in contrast of those of gay, particularly where those interests are perceived to clash. And that is the Wikipedia version. Now, so what I found my, in the Urban Dictionary, which I'm going to look at now. Let me see if I wrote that. In the Urban Dictionary of Heterophobics, the terms, same thing, but no different. Homosexual who harbors a deep hatred for heterosexual individuals. This can result from being threatened like a, or treated like an outcast by peers all their lives of being mistreated, harassed, or threatened. Quite similar to racism. The most common heterophobic slurs is breeders. You ever heard that term before, um, that one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Which implies that all straight people plan to have children which isn't always the case. Greg, fuck breeders. The world would be a better place if they were wiped out the face of the earth. Now, that's like a little, um, like a dialogue, like somebody for a sentence. And it's my speaking. Uh-huh. What I just said. Yeah. So it's not really a true term, but that's like what they normally will say. Like a little, like the, you know, like a role playing. Right. But that's the definition of it. So okay. now we come to that. After getting the definition, to people get it clear, and they can look up for their own liking. To tonight's discussion, and people are going to say, "Why I title this again?" Because there is a real fear of people that have no problem with the opposite sex. You know, and right. what the society has done now for almost fifty years. And I say 50 years because on a recent stream I did on here, when gays were celebrating their, um, you know, gay thing, the LGBT yeah. thing, back in uh, it, that past of month of June, it started yeah. in the summer of June something, 1969. We are now 50 years into this. And look at yeah. what has happened and what has been pushed and what we see now in our reality within 50 years. They are actually almost complete with the full onslaught and degeneracy of you know, a, race, a race, not only a race, but a nation of people. The only thing left is the pedophiles, which is one and the same like the heterosexuals. Right. And from another conversation I had with other brothers, that they're waiting for this one lady to come out with something. And after that, they're going to broadcast it that pedophiles are is no longer a crime. But then again, when I talked about this in the month of 
January from the information I got from Dr. Short. This is something that they would have been planning this for the last year or two. But the only thing is they got to put things paperwork-wise in law. They already accomplished this months ago. So the next thing now they're going to come out. And the reason why I'm saying is because if they're going to come out shortly, that means they already got approved months ago when I did that reading back in my first stream. Right. So now what they're going to do, once they come out, the next step, once they fully come out and said it's nothing wrong, and they, you're going to see TV shows, commercials, catering to sickness. Because now wow. what you do, you have to condition, like how they condition people to accept homosexuality. Right. And you know how long it took for the people to find nothing wrong with it. You know how long it took for people in the side to accept it? That one, you, you know, time table, how long it took? How long? Um, well, I'm guessing it took a period of over 30 years, at least, mm. or, 29, or, or, tw- or 29 years. And mind you, this is my opinion why it took this long, because remember, after the end of the 60s, you know, and they start saying it's no longer a disorder in 1973 and put in effect the next year, Yeah. within the next close to 20, the first generation, after 69 going on to 89, we hear in the 90s they were making movements. And you would know because you were an adult back then. You hear movies of gay rights and all that stuff back in 92, 93. Remember that? No, mm, I, I was in the military. I don't remember. Oh, too you much. were in the military? Okay. Yeah, well, the, yeah. The, 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 there, were, there were movements going on in the early 90s, particularly 20 years after it was put in, they, when they started removing it from the DSM books. Oh. So I'm telling people the time frame. It takes a period of a generation, 20 years, to start seeing new movements. First, they take it as they, they remove the disorder, either by it was in a book, they remove it, or they put laws in place. The next step is to start create movements. Right. And that does all come all in the same year. It comes in layers. Do you right. know what I mean? Everything oh, happens yeah, in layers. Yeah. 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 Everything happens in layers. So now when we see that there's a movement push in 93, we're looking at, okay, there's push it back in 1993. So my math is wrong. I would say it take a period over 25, 26 years. But the reason why I'm saying almost 30 years is because it takes decades before you people are comfortable and accepted to it. Because right. now you have to put it into them image-wise through television. We all know going late 90s, 2000s, you see them push it more. And you see around 2010s, they push further. Before right. even they, may, they strike it as you can get married legally in this country. And then right. after the legalization that you get married in this country and all 50 states, four years later, they said, now we're giving you a check, which really right. is not a reparation, but a check nonetheless. Um, oh, yeah, one thing yeah. before I continue. No one, did you get a chance to listen to my, my previous broadcast on yeah, it? Yeah, I, 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 I got about a good 45 minutes in before we got ready to do this show. So. All right, that's good. But I think I, taught, I read it enough so you, you got a full understanding. Look, I oh, read yeah. it for the first so the catch on speed, Dawa, that's what they did. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah. So people think that they're getting some reparations. They, they, were, they were just getting a check from that was owed to them years ago. But they put it in a form and tailor it as reparations because they do it despite black people, descendants of this country, that say, before I give you anything, you niggas, I will give the, the people that are sexually confused a little money that I owe them anyway because they're not right. getting nothing. Right. Seven million dollars divided by whatever percent that people that LGBT, it's not a lot. Right, right. It's not a lot. Now, if it was like a billion dollars, okay, you say so. But when I look at the the money that was paid out, and people not really understand, when you look at not every person that is in a marriage that's quote unquote gay getting six seven million dollars. You get me? Right, right. That money is evenly divided up. Back right. that, that was owed to them. That money was owed to them because in marriage, and you probably was married. Anybody know that's marriage? You get some of your tax write off if you're in the marriage. Last my check. I could be wrong. You get a what? You get a tax write off if you're married. A tax write off. No, like like if you're married, there's something in the taxes. You know. Yeah, you, you, get, yeah, you get more. You get more because the, could be that's if you have children. And also, depending on where you're working, and sometimes it depends on if the woman is getting 
welfare, something like that. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's not it, it's some benefits to it uh, on the government level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Some people get some, like you said, all the above. And we think about people in this country. There are some people that not much Americans still married, depending on what we talk about. But some do have kids, and they're getting some benefits out of this right. system, right? Right. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm talking about. People that are quote unquote, you know, LGBT, they're married, but you know, they're not looked at as a tax bracket like that. Right. You know, because you right. don't have kids, right? Right. And it's right. what we said earlier: breeders. They label people right. that are sixty. We're breeders, so we like to right. procreate and keep. So you're not you're not producing nothing. So why you right. want something? Right. Only people get something if you produce. Last time I checked. Right. Right. You're not producing nothing. So why would they include you in the tax bracket? Exactly. But they're getting that. Get me? Right. So not producing. That's the point I'm saying. So they are included in that. And I'm going to go back to that broadcast because that was like a month ago. But people get the point that um, that's what they got in their so-called reparation. It's just despite most of our people that didn't get much stuff or they say, well, the only thing black people got was a hearing. If you're going to get something. So they're still going to play games with it. And mostly, all who that, that did that was one party, Democratic Party. Right. Now, I'm not saying people should go Republican because Democrat. I'm saying as a person, you should make the best decision. You should not be giving nobody your vote, period, unless they give you something that is to your liking, to your offer. Right. Because every time when you submit your will and enter to one party for not years, for decades, that's all they're going to expect out of you, so they don't have to give you nothing. Right. Because because it's guaranteed. Yep. So, anything guaranteed, you're not, you're not going to demand nothing. If, it's, if, if all I got to tell you is to vote me and I will do this. All right, how right. are you going to do this? Don't worry about it. Just vote me. Okay. Right. And then we see after the first four or five years, they have not done squat for you. For your right. people. <laughs> so this is right. how the game works, people. That's, That's it. how it works. That's it. So at the end of the day, um, people got to be more subconscious of their decisions because no one's going to give it up. You got to demand it. Hell, you might have to fight for it if need be. But no yeah. one's going to give you that. That's not how the world works. You know what I'm saying? Right. If the world did work like that, we wouldn't be on this phone right now that one. No, Everything that I'm happens good. to other black people would be good. Right. There will be no complaint. Matter of fact, you would not have wrote a book about it. If everything was that good. Wouldn't have been no need. No need. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, but this is the world we live in today. But anyway, on to the matter of subject. Now, my piece on the Malik Gilba situation. Yes. Yeah. Now, y'all know. Y'all know damn well. Me as a man. And that one about me for this. And I hear a lot of people say the reason why he might have came up because it's more things politically that's stepping in for this to happen. But I look at more big picture. And not only that, that there's a transsexual right now or a trainee out there that said he's going to expose him, which is irrelevant, that people don't understand this. To any man that sit there and still proclaim that they're still heterosexual, and they still mess with people that are men but dressed in disguise as them or get the sex change or get the hormones, you are still messing with a man. You're not messing with the opposite sex. Is so that? by definition, you, you are not considered heterosexual. You are actually in the realm of a homosexual, a fact, right. for lack of better terms. Right. But because the insanity of the world we live in today, everybody lets things fly by and say, oh, you know, this is a, a regular straight man, but he messed around with other men. Not physical right. men, but men that dress up and put on hats and get special parts in their body, like boobs right. and all this. You're right. still interacting with a man. And right. why is you down to, to when we come, when we, to be honest with people, there's no such thing as a bisexual person, both girl or man. Once you start messing around with the, with the, the same sex, you are in the realm of homosexuality or dissexuality, yeah, yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah. It's called same oh. sex for a reason. Same sex, yeah. so called sex, is, is homosexual. Okay? Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. what it is. So. That's what yeah. it is. Yeah. So we, 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 don't, we don't want people to start 
entertain wordplay when people right. give these terminologies. I tell people, right. say, what is the actual definition? Okay, homosexuality, you mess with someone that is the same sex, same parts, and you engage in relationships. Well, there's no such thing as relationships, but you engage in some activity right. that is not what we call correct sex. is actually incorrect sex. And right. Then, because there's nothing being produced. Right. I mean, because hopefully you want something produced. Now, people are saying that because men and women have sex that there's not always child's always born, but in, the, in regards to the energy of sex, you get into some form of exchange. Right. And eventually it will lead to some producing. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. I want people to be logic in their thinking. You know what I'm saying? But when we deal with the realm of insanity and dissexuality, homosexuality, this is what we have. Right. Oh, oh I, I'm looking at it right now. It's, I'm sure ABC would love this topic. I bet you he, he would, MJ. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so like I said, Malik Oba, he's doing that for other reasons, and it's not always because he's trying to shed light what's always there. Darwin, you've been researching this for years now, and I've noticed a lot of celebrities have been coming out from certain um, platforms saying that they – I hear wince that mess, they're messing well with trannies. Mm-hmm. I've been hearing this now for years now. You get me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only thing now what you see today is that you're going to see a lot more come out comfortably saying they mess with trannies. And the reason why I say they're going to come out comfortably is because there's something to gain off this now. Uh. They didn't say this years ago, Darwin. But because these people are getting something now out of this, because a lot of people can get married now, you know I think there's a more present what we're uh, seeing now. Now, not saying these these people that engage in this, this sexual manner that they're going to be married to these transsexuals. No, I'm saying now that there's something that they'll feel there's they will gain something out coming out because they'll feel there's no scrutiny. There's not going to be no bashing. You get me? Yeah, I got you. And here's a, here's another twist. Since Malik Yoba came out, every person on Twitter or all these outlets, you know it was men that had no problem he coming out? Some were congratulated. Did you know this, that one? Yep. Isn't that frightening? Man. Why other men congratulate have no problem with this? Yeah, that shit is crazy to me. It, it might question the males on our side, especially the brothers. When we talk about the download mail, this is not no longer a myth. This is a serious reality now. Yeah. It's so much a reality. I tell black women, you know, you got to be extra careful, sweetie. You got yeah. to be, you're, 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 not only your gay rare has to be up, but now you got to question some things he does, especially if he's in the bedroom and he wants to do certain things. Right there, that should be a red flag. Yeah. Right there, that's a fucking joke. It should be a yeah. red flag. You might have to get yourself tested every man say he wants to engage some behaviors with you if he hasn't really slipped with you right. Right. You know? And I'm not saying to be harsh to me, but and, and this is this is the funny thing out of all this. I hear these dudes in these outlets saying that black women are the highest women that got the highest rate of disease in the community. You heard this, right? You heard about this, right? Yeah. Other men talking about this, right? Yeah, I've heard that before. Now, it makes more to say, how is this a possibility? Mm. Huh. Right. Now, as you go into a source of these things. Right. We don't, we, we, we just sit there and go emotionally and say, oh, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not messing with you because first they have too much children out of weather and they have too much of an STD rate in the community. But last one check, black women still have intercourse with some of these men that are funny and questionable, you know? Yeah. Either by, two, either by choice or they just don't know. It's one or the other. I don't know. So you, you, any man that will make that statement really, is not really looking at the bigger picture, you know? Right. And the funny thing, they will say it's about black or women, you know? But when I say it's to other races of women, you ever know what I'm saying? Right. 
What? And it tells me their allegiance and who they really value and care. Right. Who actually, who they really want, actually. Right. Because most black dudes, once they find someone that's non-black, especially female, they get happy. You can smile, it's like no stress, but no say your promise has just begun. Yeah. You know? It just begun. And because we live in America, most black people, they interracial with the upper, the, the, the oppressive class, the Caucasus. Yeah. Right. Right. So you go into the enemy sexually now and feel that right. you're, you're comfort with a female. And mind you, let me tell you something about this. That European woman that y'all sit there lay in bed sleeping, you know, she's only getting something from you. But other than that, what you bring is nothing. Especially right. if, they're the one, if they're the ones that are the outcasts of the community. Because we got, they got a lot of other races of people, especially men and women, are outcasts amongst their own people. And they come to the black side just to, you know, find comfort and power procreate. Because right. they can't really be accepted much in their own, to be honest with you. And the reason why is because they were, what is the word, non-select. Oh. You see a lot of European women that are very obese, fat, right? Yep. And they men not take them. So who's going to take them? The, 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 what they call disposables, the trash, black right. men. Yep. That's why if you look at any picture, you see them with pretty much obese, obese looking, non-black women. Wow. Yeah, I've right. seen this. You might see this. And this is not love. This is something because it's like a, tro- a trophy for a lot of black males. Because we look at most of the men that select these women, no way in hell that they can really get a real pseudo female that's selected that they could take as a mate if they get get her. You know? Uh huh. I hear a lot of them complain about the women that they can't get. Some sister right. they can't get. If if they get this non black woman, they'll so, sit there throw shade to these sisters like they, they achieve something. And but right. well deep down inside they really wanted you, but they could get you. So they said, I'll set up with this. Right. That, that is sad. That's sad. Yeah, I totally Very agree. Sad. Totally. Um, um, I, I'm not sure if you want to expound more on this, um, that one. I'm going to look at the chat room for a second. You could talk a little bit. Let me see who's on here. Oh. Uh, hello, MJ. hope you had a good... Oh, that's nothing. Okay, it's nothing. I can't... Tell Dawan sound like what's this? I can't tell Dawan sound like a mama's boy. I don't like MJ saying that. You know, MJ, you got to call up. You made a funny girl. Anyway, I'm going to leave the chat because it's getting a little crazy. Anyway, moving on. Um, Before I move on, any specific current um events that you noticed lately? That one that I have not picked up because I really don't follow everything. There's so much. Well... Uh, yeah, I was watching. I want to still tap on this Malik Gilbert for a second. Uh, okay. This is like, uh, it needs to really be dealt with, for real, because I was watching early. I was watching Tigger, you know, you know, Big Tigger. He yeah. Got a radio show. Yeah. yeah. He got a red tiger. He got a radio show, Tigger, Tiger, whatever. He got a radio show, and he had Miss, uh, Sophia, as they call it, from Green 103. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, Miss Sophia is a man. Okay, it's, it's mm-hmm. quite obvious. But Miss Sophia is part of the LGBT, of course, community. And Miss mm-hmm. Sophia classified, uh, this this person that called herself Miss Sophia, I put it like that, classified mm-hmm. Malik Yoba as a gay man. This is somebody okay. in the LGBT community that's saying mm-hmm. he gay because he uh that's that was his own personal opinion because mm-hmm. of him dealing with a man that still got, you know, his uh his anatomy, everything he was born with, he still got his genitals and all that type of stuff. So you dealing mm-hmm. with that, but you just dealing with a whole that's a whole entire man. Mm-hmm. Then the Nova came out also and said that his inspiration has been a transgender white boy. Have you seen that? I have not seen it. Now that you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, this is inspiration. 
has been, he said it on that radio show. He didn't say the guy was white. But I saw this guy that he claimed to be his inspiration with that madness, mm-hmm. and that's a whole white boy. And when I saw him, I didn't, I, I looked at, I didn't look at the caption. I looked at the two in the picture. And I said, that looked like a damn white duck. And in the damn mm-hmm. caption, it said that that's, it was a white dude. I mean, I said, that's a lie. I said, that woman looked like a white dude. And in the caption, that's exactly what it was. And he said on his radio show, mm-hmm. his inspiration was a transgender person. And he told this wow. transgender person, I love you. You, 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 you gorgeous, you beautiful, some old BS because you've been living your truth. You got to, you got to hear it, man. This man sounds so insane. He wow. sounds crazy as hell, bro. And mm-hmm. the fact that all these other cats is coming out talking about it's okay to be that way. They, they've been feeling that way for a minute. It just goes show, bro. All these shows we've been doing for years, mm-hmm. it's worse than we even thought. It's worse, bro. You got these mm-hmm. dudes. Like, how the hell are you talking about? I don't like the fact that this dude is sitting up there acting like transgender dudes. The dudes with penises are still women. Dudes that mm-hmm. even go in there and get a, get surgery, get their balls cut off and penis pushed up in their belly and, and the whole cut where their scrub used to be at and all that. You still cannot turn a man into a woman on a laboratory or some table somewhere to drop the ball. You can't do it. Mm-hmm. This, this is the sickness, and so many people are calling these individuals women. Mm-hmm. And then you got the transgenders calling the real women cis women. What? Yeah. C I S. They don't. They, they don't. They, they they've got rid of the word real. They don't want to use real in front of women no more because that that ostracizes all the fake ass wannabes. That's that's the ones who had the full surgeries, and that's the ones who still have all their man parts. They are out of there, and all the mm-hmm. homos that that, that that just homos they out of there. They're, when you say real and put woman behind, that's it. So they had to get rid of real. They they say now cis c i s gender or CIS women or something like that. This is so wow. bad. This is so crazy, bro. Yeah, they just read the, the transgender male, which ain't nobody but a white boy. Nobody but a white boy. The, these freaks are the ones mm-hmm. who are in charge of defining sexuality. Mm-hmm. And if you look mm-hmm. into this homosexual LGBT movement, they mm-hmm. say that the transgender is the gatekeeper to all this madness. And it makes sense to me because, it's, it, you know, if you think about, they they, they dealing with I would what I would with what I would consider hell, hellish type energy. So it makes perfect sense for this so called transgender, which is a, uh, 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 I have to I have to say the transgender would be like the devil to me, like the Joker has mm-hmm. two faces, right? If you're playing mm-hmm. cards, the Joker has two faces. He's a joker. And then, right, he yeah. got the clown face, and he got the other, the devil face on the back of the clown head, or whatever. The, you know how it go. And the energy is how this shit can change up. That damn mm-hmm. training is a person that's used to disguise us. And, and it's, it's, it's crazy to describe, to disguise themselves, excuse me. They're used to um, fool every damn body. And they've been doing it on TV for so damn long, bro. This is an insidious situation that we're dealing with here, man. It's sinister as hell. He was going into the lingerie. We just found out that Victoria's Secret, the secret is them, a lot of them have been training. They've mm-hmm. been disguising and creating these so-called women out of men for so damn long. Even back in the day, the cabaret with white boys way back, in the Western days, the cabaret, they had a bunch of damn training. There was a bunch of men. And I heard, I went to Detroit this past week with what they call the 1619 Project. This professional basketball mm-hmm. player from this city, he sponsored it. And at that particular time, I had never knew that the minstrel show started out with men dressing like women. 
Wow. And that was the white man who was all on TV doing that stuff a long time ago. They've been pushing this movement for so long. Like, so, like I said before, people think I'm crazy, but there's some questionable white so-called females that have been very pivotal in the demise of our people through our history. And that's Susan B. Anthony, who I believe was nothing but a big throat-ass, golf ball throat-ass white man. And this ugly uh, uh, CIA agent, Gloria Steiner. I think mm-hmm. that's a big old golf ball throat-ass, tennis ball throat-ass, softball throat-ass man, too, if you look at the picture yeah. of this dude now. And mm-hmm. that thing, Gloria Steinem used to be, and it's all tied in, but Gloria Steinem, it, Gloria Steinem used to be a Playboy bunny. And if you go back and look at the Playboy really? bunny, yeah, Gloria Steinem, bro, was a Playboy bunny. That's a CIA operative, bro. That creature wrote a lot of visceral information against black men. But they used a black woman to make it seem like the black woman was spitting all this hatred against black men. But it wasn't. This beast, Gloria Steinem, was like a ghostwriter, basically. You know what I'm saying? Like in rap, they have ghostwriters, whatever. Usually they have ghostwriters. Well, this beast, yeah. Gloria Steinem, was writing all this hatred about black men. Who do you know that hates the black man the most on the planet? Is it the white man or is it the white woman? The well, white man. It's the white man that hate us more so than the ugly white woman. You see what I'm saying? So okay. uh, the way that the information was written, it, you can tell it, well, it was not coming from the, from the white woman. This was coming straight from a man. But you got to get into You got to go into the gatekeeper type stuff and information and this transgender information to really get what I'm trying to tell you. They've been using these trannies, bro, all over the globe. For this mm-hmm. particular time, putting them in certain spots, and now they're using mm-hmm. Malik Yoba. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that black man used to think was one of the most masculine cats on TV, one of the yeah. hottest black men yeah, in the Yeah, man, that was that was the show, bro. Everybody watched. I know I did. I loved it. You yeah. see, but then, but now you but then you turn around later on after these years of us loving it, and it's sitting in us. You know what I'm saying? Our psyche. And I saw like every time we see Malik Yoba, we think of New York Undercover. I don't give a damn about what we're doing with Tyler Perry. We think about New York Undercover. Then, but then mm-hmm. we go to the information and we find out about him. You see what he's doing now. He's gay. And then you, the other dude, the, the, the Puerto Rican dude, he's a homo too. In real life. So, yeah. bruh, it's, it's a sinister movement. They've been doing this and putting these people in place around us for so many years it ain't any it ain't even funny. And then you got these friends that get on the radio shows, uh the people let them talk like it's like it's like Miss Sophia, like so called Miss J. Black radio black radio entertainers let these transgender type dudes for years come on radio and talk and have like a comedy skit on a lot of these radio shows, bruh. They've been doing it, they've been putting these mugs in place for a minute, bruh. Hello? Yeah, I'm sorry, Dawan. I was doing something. What you said? No, I'm just saying. I'm just. I'm through. Okay. Oh, cool, cool. Um, yo, man. You know one thing, Dawan. Every time you come on to us, it, it's a different element that is not really discussed because you go, you do like a little brief history lesson, but like a deep root of certain sources that we don't really think about. You know. Yeah. And that's nothing wrong with that because people got to have clarity. Because let's say, and you know a lot of people have a, or have something against the book you wrote and other things yeah. that you might come out down in the future, right? Right. And now because all what has been surfacing now, I don't want people to keep telling me about this, this thing that people are gay, they're born gay. No, this is not something genetic. This is something worse. A lot of people are going through trauma. Some of them don't admit the trauma because, you well, know, when it comes to males, males don't like to talk about they've been touched. Right. We got to be honest here as race people. Which right. one you know says going to admit that he, he got fucked in his ass by, by the male? Come on. Right. Right. It don't happen. 
It don't that happen. Ain't men willy, willy, that ain't some men that, you know, ready to just tell the world. Yeah. And I haven't noticed. And think about it. Not only that, let's say it was in the family it happened, right? Right. Then I can even talk even more about it. They're going to keep that to the grave or something happens where they just come out and bust out and say it. Because nine tenths of the time, if a family knows somebody and a family touched somebody or they know, they'll make the effort to say, okay, we're going to handle this. No right. serious punishment, no ostracize of the family. This motherfucker stays in the family amongst the whole family. Yep. Once it's revealed that he did that. Yep. What else tell you? Ooh, bro, that is one of our major problems. It's one of our major problems uh, is yeah. molestation and people not wanting to talk about it and bring it to the surface. If somebody raped you, and that's different than you just willfully giving yourself to somebody. When somebody raped you, they take something from you. That's different. When you they take everything from right? you, your innocence. Right. Your right, natural that's crazy. mind, your everything, and then you right. go to sleep with those crazy dreams. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You can't right. rest that, well. It bothers right. psyche. Right, and that that wouldn't be a person's fault. Now, getting them to understand that, I guess, may be an issue. But I don't see any. I don't know why anybody would would ridicule a person that was raped when they was younger. A rape, even when you're grown, it can happen because. People just got to force you. You, you. you got somebody stronger than you and bigger than you or whatever, or several people. I don't even know who you are. You got men in prison that get raped, and they be strong mm-hmm. as the goddamn are, and they still can get raped because you can be overpowered. You see what I mean? So I, there's nothing, that would, that's really, to me, that's something that men should be allowed to come out and talk about and say that this happened to so-and-so or so-and-so without, without people looking at you funny because uh, that rape is a part of this culture. Incest is a yeah. part of America. It's it's as it's it's American as as, as apple pie. These goddamn devils that instituted this whole country were the biggest rapists on the planet. So they allow rape. That's it's a rape culture. You see, the the white man is a is a it has a culture of rape. Period and savagery, molestation, and all that type of stuff. So I mean, we living in the belly of hell. So of course, hellish things happen to people in hell. So we should be able to tell those So I think brothers should be able to come out that happen to them and come out with, I know I ain't going to say anything to a brother or get on a brother's case or make a brother feel bad if that's really the damn case. And I hope people don't think it's what I'm doing or I've been doing for years because that's never been my intention. Oh, I, mm-hmm. What I am strong against, I'm real strong against these homos that, are, that, that do have no kind of remorse for what they do. They don't give a damn. They so-called call themselves so prideful. They don't want to hear no information. They're not trying to stop no young person from going to that lifestyle. They don't talk about the dangers of the shit. They don't talk about the negatives. All they talk about is the good, dog, whatever so-called good. Those are the ones I, I get on the case. I get on the I get on the case. They're not beneficial to the helping of, of, of you because they, a lot of times, what you do with it? The truth, bruh, from what I know, homosexuality comes through Trump. Most of that shit comes through, it comes through trauma, bro. Stuff that mm-hmm. the people don't want to talk about, pain and hurt. So how the hell could it come through trauma when it, the inception of it comes through trauma? And then later on, there's something you rewarded for, something is that everybody loves. How the hell could that something so traumatic? For so many people, and the inception of it becomes something so honored and magnified. That shit is crazy, bro. Yeah, it, it's just unheard of. And... Like I said, in the society, they view everything as normal. So, right. like I said, and all things normal is to Western Western culture is abnormal. We got to keep it real. Right. Most of our people have been in this country for centuries, generations, right? You right. are in a space or an environment that abnormality is supposed to be the norm. If you're not abnormal in this society, you are looked to be outcast to look to be, you know, possibly weird, and hell, even look to be, you know, something wrong with you. Yeah. They look at you yeah. and say, oh, they'll, they'll, it's going to be pointing out down where they're going to say, when people talk about certain sexual activity, they're going to look at you first and say, wait, 
we mean something's wrong with anal sex. Are you crazy? Right. They're right. going to look at it like that. You, you're, you're mad. You're insane. Yeah. Or we're doing yeah. some other degenerate filth. Go I'm sorry. We're there already. People are already, people are already doing that. Mm-hmm. They're already. And they're eating, they're eating the valves, too. Yeah. That, and yeah. that was just recently. Now, you see, one thing with, when, we, when we deal with sex, sex is a, is a fab, is a hobby. It, and when it, comes, when it becomes like that now, the only thing people do is they want to intensify or make it more interesting because it's like any drug. When it's not strong enough, you, what you do, you try to look for something to increase the doses to make whatever you're taking to get that buzz to be right. extra strong. Right. We well, look at it in sex, too. It's no different. So what, what society does now, they'll condition the youth, the youngsters, to say, this, we want to teach you alternate sex practice. But I'm thinking, say, what the fuck does a child need to learn alternate sex class, I mean, sex practice, when they can't even read write or do the basics. Right. That that should be taught as they become later teenagers. Or hell, yeah. their parents could probably teach them some if, if most you know, let's say again, most parents not really teach anyway, so I'm gonna squash it. But if they're gonna learn to any institution, it should be later on in their development age. Right. It's not be the primer. Do you get right. me? Well, yeah. Because most children that become young teenagers and become young adults, once they leave those institutions, whether public or private, are not doing or reading or doing all of the above above level. They are actually below level because the institution you send your ch- child in is not teaching your child shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you know I can prove this that one? Look at how people are writing and texting. When they send message through social media, or yeah. also, we use a lot of incorrect grammar. Oh yeah. So it tells you right there if you if you do use an in- incorrect grammar, that tells you the school system that you've been in from pre K to twelve have not teach you a goddamn thing. They pass you by. That yeah. No child left behind act that George Bush put in because he knows that to have the society how the system wants to keep a better control so they can people keep engaged in consumerism, you have to continue the dumbing down of people. And what's right. the best way to dumb down people? So called education. Other yep. nations across America educate their people. They are really doing things above level besides here in America. Why? Be simple because they know it is vital for the nation to to sustain themselves, they cannot afford their people to be fucking dumb. Right. But up here, it's okay to be a fucking dummy. Yeah. Because it benefits the system. Because now say it's one less problem. You're not right. going to be able to know what I'm going to do to behind closed doors because you can't read the language I'm putting out there. If I put a, a, a law passed, you're not going to see it on Fox fucking news. You're going to see it on a newspaper. Oh, I forgot. Most people don't read the newspaper. Because most newspaper nowadays caters to foolishness. Drama. Because right. a lot of people are not reading the small things. Right. You get me? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to say. Right. Mm-hmm. And as I look at the um, chat room, yeah, I see. Okay. Okay. All right, moving on. Now, to the Richard Pryor piece. And, you know, mm-hmm. I, wish I, could play, I could wish I could play it. My right. bad. Let me see. If, let me, one second. You talk. Oh, right. Let me do this. All right. You talk while I, while I try to get this. Huh. Yeah, I saw that Richard Pryor piece. Uh, you know, Paul Mooney and... Yeah. I know Paul Mooney, let me tell you, man. To me, I listen to Paul Mooney, but I've always wondered, is Paul Mooney, damn, he, he showed in the hell seem like a, a feminine dude. You know, I've been checking him out for years, and they always look feminine, you know, always sound feminine. I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt because 
I don't want to think every man is that. But uh, <laughs> but damn, uh, he he really, yeah he, yeah I'm I, I just about to agree with this. And I heard I remember I heard uh, him and Richard Pryor when Richard Pryor was I think it was they was roasting somebody I don't know whether Richard Pryor was getting roasted they was roasting Palmer somebody was getting roasted and uh, Richard Pryor was up talking. And he was cracking on everybody that was on at the table, or whatever. And uh, he also said that uh, everybody knows that Paul Mooney is a is a, like a little woman or something. He basically said that Paul Mooney, everybody that screwed, all of them has screwed Paul Mooney us. No, he talked about how Paul Mooney sucked this damn uh, executive. Thing on him. He pulled his hands on and just sucked the thing on him or something like that. That's what he said. And Paul didn't say it. It was all just laughing or whatever. And he also said himself that he slept with or dealt with a a, a, a man himself, a tranny or something like that. And he would have married the boy, but he had to go away and do something like I don't know, some crazy man. He said he would have married the dude. Mm-hmm. That's what Richard Pryor himself did. Yeah. So, All right, I'm gonna see. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I can find the tape, and I'm gonna have to upload. Give me a sec. Keep talking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do this. Yeah. So I, I found that to be quite Hollywood. <laughs> it's like Hollywood, man. It's like to get off into of that mess. You, you know, you just about got to be down with the, you know, with the Hershey mm-hmm. Highway. You know, you got to take trips every now and then down the Hershey Highway. You got to get some doo on your thing along. You got to, you got to get some piss. You got to get some piss in another man's butthole or something like that. You got, you got to do some old wild, crazy, sick, demented madness. So in order to deal in, with that Hollywood, it really just makes me wonder, man. I, it's like everybody, I think every man in Hollywood is tainted with that gay shit some kind of way. I don't see none of them speaking against them. I don't see the Denzel Washington coming out against homosexuality, LGBT, QP. You know, I don't see Morgan Freeman. I, I ain't seen, uh, 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 what's the other brother's name? I can't think of his name now. Oh, yeah. Uh, Blair Underwood, who's a big time actor, but I ain't seen him speak. I don't see none of these black actors coming out in defense for straight men. None of them. I haven't seen Samuel L. Jackson do either. None of these men in Hollywood. Speak up for straight men. I haven't seen none of them even come out later on lately and say nothing uh, uh, in reference to what Malik Yoba said. They ain't distancing themselves from that either. Lawrence Fishburne, none of these, Will Smith, of course not. None of these big-time actors, man, have came out in defense of straight men. But they all so-called, the ones I named, all of them get together, they have women, got wives, and all that type of stuff. But we never hear them speaking against them. Never hear them speaking out. In, in favor of heterosexuality. As a matter of fact, you don't hear that in Hollywood from no damn body. Angela Bissett was sucking the face with uh, Lady Gaga on the female, on the feminine, on the woman's side, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, even some people say, she that's a man. You know, I mean, it's, it's so yeah. much of that in Hollywood, bro. So much transgender Love and homosexual love and you know and whatever you want to call it, Hollywood is everywhere, bro, all over the damn place. And we just continue to keep on honoring these actors and respecting them, watching all the damn award shows. Like these people need to be rewarded for what? Rewarded for what? Really? Acting, faking, and shit like that. that's all they do. It's fake, but there's an agenda behind that. They're not going to pay actors millions of dollars to act like sissies if they wasn't trying to do something. White folks ain't spending that much money. Homosexuals ain't spending all their money with all this gay propaganda and stuff like this if they wasn't trying, seriously, really, seriously, really, seriously trying to make all of us that way. I think that's the goal of Hollywood. I don't understand why come no straight black man with a wife in Hollywood ever comes and says anything to speak up for straight black men. They don't say nothing about men, men, black women. They don't do none of that. They, they don't speak out against anybody. Spaceships, Hollywood, ain't no good. That's the way I feel about it. 
It's a haven for freaks, pedophiles, homos, all that. That's what it, that's what it is. Okay. I found it. I'm trying to convert it. Give me a second. All uh-huh. right. Yeah. Yeah, but like I was saying before, um, yeah, it's, a certain, it's more than ritual. This is the thing that's known if you're going to be in Hollywood, especially if you try and get in a certain class or come up. You know, there are certain things you're going to have to do. But the Hollywood is run by non-black people. Most particularly, I think Jewish people run the Hollywood. And you, we all know what they do. Oh. There you yeah. go. Now, you draw Jewish people run Hollywood. There it is, because Jews have in their town move, which is the book that they put out, they wrote, they have it in there that to be a homo, I mean, that you can, you can, no, you can molest the infant up to, I think, three years old or something like that. It's some old crazy mm-hmm. wild man. So in molestation, mm-hmm. it, I mean, uh, incest, I not mean, incest, but molestation is part of their spiritual writing. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like religion for them. Yeah. And so all these people come in, a lot of these people that's in Hollywood that we think are black, they have Jewish time. Like Prince. Prince came in because Prince was created because they didn't want Jimi Hendrix. They didn't want a black god on the guitar that was not a fact. They mm-hmm. represented strong male Indian type, a native native type of features. Or whatever. They didn't want that type of image. But they wanted mm-hmm. a god on the guitar, but they didn't want it to be somebody like that. So they got rid of him. Yeah. And they gave us Prince, this little androgynous dude. And Prince mm-hmm. has Jewish Jewish uh uh ancestry. That dude didn't know that. that's that's the white part is that Jew. That's what Prince was. Mm-hmm. A damn little Jew boy. And you know this mm-hmm. Prince never, ever had no real sister that he was really with. They didn't give him that. He gave him, they gave him all them other looking sisters, vanities and um, the Apollonias and sisters like women like that. They were never distinctively indigenous, ever. The woman he dealt with that I know of. Right? Wow. And then he had one child, and that child was supposed to have been ill, very sick. And but he's all the money he made, all the women he was around, but only one son. I, I and that actually got one. They they said he was going to give birth to a child, but she died. I mean, the child died. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. What's that about? It didn't, it, it didn't really happen, to be honest with you. Yeah, bro. These people, man, some, there's something about these people, man, when it comes down to children. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, look, look at uh, Michael Jackson. I mean, the, the, mm-hmm. the stuff that went on with him and the gay ties to him and what they're saying about him being, you know what I'm saying? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to let me play it. Because I think you could hear it. I'm going to play it. If you can't hear it, let me know because anybody else says I'm doing all this converting. I'm going to start yeah. from the beginning. Okay. Because the relationship became tragic. Okay. Because Paul knew it for Richard's son by that time. So Richard passed away in 2005. Where was his and Paul's relationship at that time? Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so that means it sounds good. People can hear from then. Uh, well, so um, JoJo Bass on, the relationship became fragile. Okay. Because Paul knew it for Richard's son by that time.
y'all guys out if y'all call I have two people calling right now. Look at this. If I open the calls, I'm going to tell y'all this right now, guys. No one can tell me a fuck that people that are homosexuals are not pedophiles. That just huh. squashed everything right there. Let's just kill that noise. It just killed it. Just kill it. Just kill it. That's all. So now, mm-hmm. this I'm going to do that one. Uh, we go, go on with this portion, but I have people raising their hands, so I'm going to open the lines. Oh, and the call number again for people to call in, 712-770-4160. 
Access code 91541-POUND. I repeat, 712-770-4160. Access code 91541-POUND. Today's subject, we do it. Heterophobia. Hmm. Who's this? I'll be in line. Hello? Okay, it's on I put him on mute. I open your line. Who's this? Uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, this is Big J here. So uh, I'm going to ask you, what book of the uh, of the Torah where it says it's all right for Jews to molest children? I don't know, but you got to look it up. It's out there. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. But... You're telling me to look it up, but you don't want to read it. The information is out there if you want to read it. I'm not going with you. The information is out there. You go look it up. No, 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 no. I need need the source. I I just told you. I don't know where. I don't have a child move. I'm telling you. Then why why, why are you saying it then? You 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 look it up. That that, that you got no proof of. What does it do that? You Jewish? I know some. You ask you ask some questions that you you just want to agitate or cause cause issue. You, you can look it up yourself, big Dave, whatever your name is. Look it up yourself, bro. I ain't got time to bother with you. Look it up. <laughs> no, no. If, 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 you, if you're going to make or make an accusation like that, a serious accusation, I think that we all need we need we need I to know something. I, I just told you, look it up. Everybody on here, look it up. I mean, where for me to look it up then? On the internet. It's called Google. Type it in. Type Go in Talmud. Type in Jewish Talmud. Yeah, but that's not good. I mean, what website does, does that say on, sir? What pure article, what empirical evidence do you have on this? I just told you. What, empir- what empirical evidence do you have, Dawa? I just told you. No. What empirical evidence do you have, Dawa? I don't know if talking to you. Hey, you you're a clown. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got something else to say. Your boy's a clown. He, he, he's a hateful bigot. He's a hateful racist uh, bigot. 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 And um, that's all I'm going to say. Um, Next. Um, BJ, one question. You there? I guess he left. Next caller. Yeah, you come on now. Hello? What was the... Hi, good evening, uh, da, Mr. Dawa and uh, Gary. What what, what what, was Big J's problem? What was he saying in the Talmud? I get, the Talmud, I, 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 I'm Talmud it, 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 the Talmud deal with the Jewish, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what, what, what you, you said earlier, because it, it, a lot of things was in my mind, because I thought it was in and out, so I didn't really catch... What was it? What about the Talmud? I said, I said that within their writings, they have a place in there where they can touch children up until a certain age. And once they, I think it's up to three or something like that. Then after that, they go back to being a virgin. Some crazy madness. But they have something, something uh-huh. within their writings. I don't own a Talmud. I don't care to buy a Talmud. But it's yeah, you know what it is? Yeah, it it says, it says, I think I remember from years ago, that if you touch another, you are allowed to do anything you want to any child or baby that's not a Jew. And okay. if it's a, you can molest them, do whatever you want, and then if you try to molest or whatever a Jew, then you have to go before the rabbinical court and they decide what to do with you. That's okay. true. Thank okay, you. Gigi. Okay. Okay. Wow. So okay. it, that's what, so that explains why they bother us, because they don't consider us so-called Jews. Right, we're Goyim. No, we, right. we, we actually, it's actually a Gentile. You know? Right. No, we're right. worse than a Gentile. Goyim. We're Goyim. Right. right. Goyim is right. Soul, soulless peop- creatures, not even people, creatures. Right. That's why they do to us the way they do us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, 
damn, but Big J was very much, he was in his feelings about that. I said, damn, Big J, maybe you're European or you're white or something. I don't know, because you oh, should right. get that mad, mad about that. That's a little questionable now, brother. I don't know if yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. brother. <laughs> 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 to be honest, because first of all, listen, real niggas don't really, real niggas do real things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and if they have an yeah. issue in regards to a book that they don't read, and like I said, you, you probably might have came across the information. And, and usually Google could help you narrow it down, something like that. That's a question mark now. Right. It costs my bigot to something that is in their writings. And Didi just kind of, you know, gave a probably better explanation. Probably made more better sense. Yeah, what, you might have told what, what, what if, if I went you might have told stuff using that uh, bigot word. Say it again? You might have told on yourself using that bigot word. For real. You're right. Mm. You may, you may be yeah, because well, I mean, black people use the word bigot. I don't remember much black people use the word bigot. No, I think about it. Do you? Especially when they're talking to other black people, and especially when they're talking about Jews. How the hell do you call a black man a bigot? He's talking about some damn Jew. Mm. People that are under the damn slave trade, the people that have to control the Hollywood. The people that's running all of what you basically see in these laws, man, get the hell up out of here. Don't know real brother, man, stay them crazy mess like me. You're a bigot. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, Big J, you, you kind of toy yourself. Well, I don't think Big J is gay. I think that he wants everybody to be treated equally and there not to be any prejudice G-G. at all. G-G. But, G-G. yeah. G-G. This dude said he is subscribed to MGTOWN. Gigi. What? He subscribed to MGTOWN. You know that, right? Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. I know you yeah. don't question our things because you're a woman, and I understand because he calls it regular. But just the terminology he used, it has to bring like a, a raise of eyebrow a little bit. And not only analyzing things, but tonight, you know, that I kind of question that. He subscribed to MGTOW. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. That is playing it all right there. What the hell? You man, get your ass. Look, next. What the hell you come up? <laughs> you oh, subscribe God, to men, men going there all the way. Where the hell they going? Oh, I'll be glad when they get where the hell they're going. And please don't ever come to hell back. Please don't. Wherever the hell MGTOW goes, don't come back. <laughs> Fuck, I hate this crazy. Me ain't going their own way. <laughs> hey, I, I'm not sure what's worse, incel or MGTOW. Well, actually, Man. one of them anyway. Well, Bro, I'm not I ain't heard of Midtown in so long. I thought I ain't even I ain't know what they was doing. I thought they was, you know, I, I ain't been paying much attention to Midtown crowd. This man going their own way type of thing. <laughs> yeah. Hey, ABC, if you dare call up, call in ABC. I know you want to give your own intake. Um, this one would do. Um, Don, let me step away from the phone a bit. Um, you you keep the conversation going. I'll be right back. Oh, well, who's on the line? Who am I talking to? <laughs> I guess I'm talking by myself. Yeah, well, waiting on somebody else to get on the line. Hopefully we can have a little bit more conversation about this situation. Because it looks as if these homos is... Uh, They ain't going to stop. I guess they're going to keep on trying to make themselves into women, or trying to replace women until, you know, nature is going to have to rise up and knock their ass right on out the box. You are not going to replace women with your booty hole or, or with your so-called wording or with cis, a CIS woman or, or none of that stuff's going to replace women. Y'all might well quit that. And you're fighting against God, if you want to use that word, you're fighting against the supreme being 
You're fighting against yourself when you're trying to fight women. Men going their own way and all this so crazy. What the hell are you going out of woman with your silly stuff? You wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for you coming to a woman in the first damn place. You see, women ain't all wrong with everything they say and think about men. Men have been oppressive as hell, especially with this gay shit. Men think they're supposed to, especially the white man with his bunk breaking ass. And you got a whole bunch of brothers out here who feel like they're supposed to go along with the buck breaker and allow your opinions to define sexuality. And please. I don't know where you're at. You there, bro? All right, I'm back, that one. Thank you. All right. Yeah, the hands. Oh, somebody called in. Let me wait see who this is. Oh, okay. I hope you're lying. Who's this? Yeah, what's going on, man? I wanted to find uh-huh. out what was the subject. I heard him saying about some, you know, back to the same type of subject, but I wanted to kind of get clarification on exactly what was your subject title, uh, Gary. Well, tonight, um, Jay, I want to say, um, I'm dealing with heterophobia, something that came across, and um, me and I was dealing with recent events. And what has been said um, um, every show I talk about, I deal with the LGBTQ and homosexual in general when I talk about this on my stream. Some some weeks I talk about it, and I kind of lay off it for a few months now. But today, you know, I decided to go in on it because it proves the, the evidence. Well, a lot of people said that this thing is either genetic or people this, this is natural or whatever. I mean, I'm not going to keep fighting over it. That's people's decision. But what y'all see is what y'all get. So if you want to bring to the conversation, that's fine. If not, I understand. So that's pretty much it. You ever thought about bringing one of those people from that community on your show as a guest to basically have did a I brought one? Did, did, did I ever bring one on my show now that you mentioned it? I don't think I ever did. That, you should. You know, as, to be honest with you, Jay, that is challenging, to be honest with you. It's very hard. I have to know somebody that's either well-known or maybe somebody that's gay that might want to come up here. But I don't really search them out, Jay. If they find me or the show, it's okay. Um, but I don't really make the conscious effort to really just search them out because on the average, and I'm keeping real, brother, a lot of them don't want to come on these streams to even talk about, to have discussion, even if I had Dawan on here. So remember Dawan, what happened to the last stream on another brother's channel? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what happened? To bring, what happened? To bring somebody on to this platform, it's going to be challenging. At this point. He, said what, he said what happened? It's going to be challenging to bring somebody yeah. that about that like that's LGBTQ onto the stream. He asked you what happened when he brought Walter Lee Hampton on. What did he do? <laughs> you got it. You, um, it, that's all I got. So I, the, the last <laughs> says it all. So, yeah. But anyway, Jay, any other thing else? Because I have other people raising their hands. They want to speak. No, nah, I'll sit back. I'll sit back until it get more deep. But, I mean, I agree at least in the part of, I mean, kids that, that you know, un- getting any type of, uh, uh, you know, education in, in, in the field of anything that has to do with adult stuff should probably be, you know, uh, there's a there's a time and a place. It's left out. Yeah, older. I mean, if kids got to learn. Yeah, that I, you know, 100. But this is I'm talking about all across, whether it be what type of positions and all that other shit in general. They, you know, there's a time for them to learn about what they need to learn about. But as a youth, the most thing is important is letting them uh, be, you know, youth and grow and education of of other sorts is important but also there's a time for that to educate them on those uh, uh subject matters and, and it is what it is because you know uh, people are going to do what they're going to do but there's a time for everything uh, that's all i would say 
Yeah, and this we could both agree on. Uh, holy, yeah, I agree on that. Kevin Hart. All right, next line. Who's this? Oh, this is Miss Lady. How you doing? I know Miss Lady. Anyway. Miss Lady, stay on line. Let me open one more line. I just one more line. Stay on line. Who's this? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, it seems, it seems that oh, you want me to ask, oh, you want to answer my question. I mean, I'm Big J. Hold on. Let Miss Lady talk, because she's got on. Go ahead, Miss Lady. Ask your question. Well, I just have a couple of, um, oh, I do have one question and a couple of comments. What does incel mean? I've heard that, but I don't know what it means. Did, did you catch my previous episode on here? No, ago? I didn't. Oh, no. shit. Let me, let me pull up definition again. Give me a second. Uh, incel means involuntary celibacy. That's what it stands for. Thank you. Oh, involuntary. So that means you can't find a woman that wants to sleep with you. <laughs> okay. So, okay. That's basically what these clowns say, yeah. Okay, yeah. and then what is this? Sis, S-I-S, what does that supposed to mean? Oh, They're man. coming up with all of these weird... Miss Lady, I'm going to be honest with you. Miss Lady, I'm going to be honest with you. Lately, for the last few days, these so-called dudes that either are select or not select, right? They are using terminologies and using it against other men, particularly black men, because they want to cater to women and go as far as marry sisters. So now they're calling these men that decide to put a ring on it, they're calling them simps now. Do you get me? What? Yes. Uh, a simp well, a yes. a is somebody oh, who protects women wait, 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 wait. With, with, with a woman yes, is, is, yes. is being, oh, being uh, yes. off kilter. Thank you. Yes. You, know, you know what this is on, Miss Lady? Sir. Miss Lady? I, I, I can't is. understand what you said. What did you say? I'm saying this. The word simp, if I want to look at the definition, which I'm not going to waste my time, this has been used totally out of proportion now. These, these no, I didn't mean simp. Huh? I said sis, S-I-S. S-I-S. What is it? C-I-S. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, 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 that's what the I guess the LGBT community is is labeling real women as now, so they don't have to say real women. They have to, they just say sis. Oh, no, they could just forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's yeah, there's, there's no confusion about <laughs> what a woman yeah. is. I'm not gonna. Yeah. That's silly. That's just. Right. I mean, who thought of that? They just somebody just sat down and said, mm, "Let me just think of something crazy." You know. You know what? Anyway. You know what? <laughs> They follow that. Uh, the, uh, the term, the term is, came, came out of the University of Berkeley. Thank you. No, no, no what y'all talking about. It came out of the okay. University of Berkeley. So what? Yeah, okay. Well, 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 I'm pretty sure whatever college that is, that group came from a home. Can you speak up a little bit, Don Juan? Advocating group. That's speaking, they're talking about whatever group this came from or whatever college it came from, I'm pretty sure they're at least advocates for the LGBT community. So, again, I'm not wrong. This came out of the LGBT community, period. Ain't no straight man made no madness like that. You're straight men, and you know what? People... In general, people with just sense are not going to try to erase real. What do you need to replace the word real for with sis? This is just a superiority. C-I-S with it. It's some gay madness. They actually created the dial wall. They, 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 they created the term sis in order to protect uh, trans, transgenders. Protect them from what? Well, Okay, okay. Uh, you know, you know, you know. I, I, you know, I, I wish we had some real people who, who no, actually protect them from what? The topic instead of just people come over them from what? How does that word that CIS protect the tranny from what? From from a uh, from a criti- from a uh, criticism of 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 the term the the d the d uh, uh what, what what's that word d uh, not mystified d 
Uh, declassified? No. Uh, the uh, it, 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 it takes away it takes away the, the stigma. It takes away the stigma of trans. trans. They're trying to. Oh, so they, the, need to, so they need something to soften the blow of them actually being a damn crazy fool and getting their balls and testicles cut off. They needed something to soften that. So they use cis. So they don't want to be discriminated against. They don't want to be talked about. They that sensitive and soft. Be what the hell you are. Be what well, but like the term, but the term cis, but the term cis is mostly towards straight men. What? The word, the word they use that the term cis is, is to identify straight men. If you are a cis male, then you are a heterosexual male. If you're not cis, therefore, though you are a you are a transgender male. Oh, so okay, okay. So you got cis men and cis women. Is what you're telling me? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's interesting. So now you want, I'm not really pissed off. So now you freaks want to tell the man that we ain't really men. So now it's the cis man and it's a transgender man. So the cis man is the real man and the transgender man is just transgender man. Right? Is that what I'm saying? Right. Right. Because, oh. you know, okay. I'm actually I'm educating, I'm educating you, uh, Dawa. You know, you're out there, you're out there talk, talking all that shit. I'm, 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 I'm actually educating terms, the real. Terms, let me ask you this question, Mr. Educator. Let me ask you this question, first of all. Mr. Educator, uh, when did they come up with the word CIS? How old is it? Uh, I, I want to say 2014, 2015. Oh, okay. Well, I broke my book in 2012. So they, you, 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 you freaks keep on changing and adding on different terms and names. I'm catching up. So thank you for your educating me on it. You really serious. You know what's going to happen? Can I just say something? Please, it's please, going to maybe evolve to where it's going to evolve to where the transgender man is going to be called a man, and the heterosexual man is going to be called cis man. <laughs> what? Yep. All right, all right. guys, guys, guys. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you know, but I have well, I have, I asked two questions, well, and, two and they went off. Miss Lady. Miss Lady. Let me check who these two people are online. I'm going to let you ask a question. Is that cool? Right. Who's this? Hey, it's ABC, man. What's up? All right, hold on a second. Let me take the next line. Who's this? Open that line. Uh, I have a comment to make in response. No, you got to wait. Wait. All right, Miss Lady, ask you two questions. <laughs> This lady, you there? Oh, yes, uh-huh. So, you know, um, when you were speaking of Goyim, uh, it's so close to Gollum, which is a creature. Remember from um, Gollum from the Lord of the Rings? Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if, that, if that's where it came from. Uh, but I want to say that um, a lot of African Americans have Jewish ancestry, myself included, so I hear what you're saying, Dawa, but I wouldn't jump to conclusions about, you know, uh, implicating just because somebody has a Jewish ancestry that they had nothing to do with, that they're somehow, you know, part of some sinister, you know, um, kind of um, organization or, you know, that kind of thing. No, I mean, the Jewish, the Jew period. The Jews, those white Jews from Germany, the most of them people so called to call themselves Jews white anyway. They're just German. Yeah, but he wasn't really folks. I don't see that he was that has nothing to do with his musical talent or anything no, like that. that. I'm not saying I'm not sorry. I didn't say that either. Hello, I what, I line, is, this? what I was saying was they did not want the top guitar player to be no black. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I saw it on the internet. I saw a white guy talking not too long after they asked the press to end up in the elevator dead, talking about how they created press. They brought, they wanted to bring an androgynous man to the surface. And the Jews are the ones who've done that. That's why I'm saying that. Uh-huh. That's all I'm saying. Entertainers are created. I mean, if you really think about it, their personas created, the roles right. that they're taking. So, right. 
So it's, it, that's kind of how it goes. They, I mean, look at how Rihanna looked when she first came out, and she's a different type of entertainer now. Um, so they've all been kind of, I think, morphed into something different. Um, but then one thing you were talking about is the, um, how no black men have stood up to the um, powers that be in Hollywood and advocated for heterosexual men, black men. Yes. But I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to ever expect them to do that because they're not going to bite the hand that feeds them. It's hard for them to get roles in the first place. I mean, remember with Isaiah Washington, he was on the Internet um, with some words, and he, I mean, uh, uh, who was it? I think it was a, was it a ball player recently, and they said something, oh, because now he's going to be on Trump's team, because I think he was blackballed in Hollywood after he um, stood up against a, a fellow gay actor when he was in that sitcom, that series, yep. and he lost his job, and he has never recovered from that. He has right. been black, and so, um, so, so the the example's been set. Nobody's going to go against them. They're running things, just like on on our jobs. I'm not going to sit up there and 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 talk about certain subject matter and 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 speak out against certain things because, you know, I need to stay employed too, just like everybody else. I mean, nobody's going to go up there to their job and do the black power sign and all of that kind of stuff. You're going to be out too black, okay? So, so, you know, wearing Black Panther gear and uh-uh, that, and, and, you know, no big afro. Nobody's going to do that. I, y'all don't expect to, uh, but check out what Isaiah Washington, I forget who's, Somebody said something, and he he retorted, "Oh, about him joining, uh, getting on the Trump team, because the liberals, the so-called liberals that are, that are running Hollywood, I guess he's been blackballed. So I guess he decided I'm jumping on the Trump team, which okay. I can understand from an economic point of view. And so um, somebody said something to him, and he said, "Listen, I um." Oh, yeah, something, something, he said something about him struggling. He must be struggling. He said, yes, I am struggling, as you said. Yes, I have, I have paid the price for the past 20 years. And he said, um, he said something about be careful what you say and what you talk about. Uh, and he said something about children, like don't, don't mess with me. I'm at that point. Leave me alone. So, you know, we people go through things, and um, so, you um, know, it's, it's, lady, <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody else raised their hand. Um, whose name is Shannon Allen? Who's this? You there? Damn, my nigga, you going to call out my whole government name on this motherfucker? I mean, well, you know, I, I, I should say Shannon. I'm not sure who that is. That's what I kind of asked. Who the hell? What's up? Fuck. I don't give do a fuck, but you would you would think like a, a logical motherfucker would know they reading somebody's government name and wouldn't say the whole. Oh shit. yeah, yeah, yeah. My fault, my fault. My fault. <laughs> yeah. You're right, you're right. I don't give a fuck, girl. What up? What's up, man, Mister Exclusive? Welcome back to TRS. It's been a oh, over a year now, man. When you first graced my lines with the lady that was in the reading, <laughs> I remember back in August, and that's when you first came around, you know. And then look at you now. You've grown very well, Taz. You did well for yourself, my brother. You know, I'm hoping that you grow even much greater because it's needed out here, man, to change it up, man. It's too much common shit. You get me? No doubt, bro. I appreciate that. All right. So how you want to – what's your take or what you want to add to this conversation? Um, oh, shit, I just got here for real. I was still listening, man. I, I, um, I'll jump in in a minute. I'm still, I was just still listening, trying to gauge where, where y'all coming from and shit. Well, the whole premise, um, because I'm here with Dawa Yisra, and we were talking about brief events, um, but the purpose of it, because I've found a word called heterophobia, and I've noticed lately for the past few weeks with LGBT constant push from the... Richard Pryor and the um, Malik Yoba, which has been the most talked about this week, to be honest with you, I can't shed my two cents on it. 
including that walk. So that's what mostly was the discussion so far. And besides that, if you want to add something different to the table or something that was not been said or anything new that you have come across with. Um, I, I mean, I just think it's a whole lot of focus on a small part of the population. Like, like I'm, I'm against the whole shit, but I, I mm-hmm. think we pay too much attention to it. It's not, um, it's not enough people that's living that alternative lifestyle for us to pay so much attention to that. You know what I'm saying? When people make that the focal point, I think that's probably the only issue I take with it. I, I think it's a problem. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. But I'm mm-hmm. I think we're talking about like maybe five percent of our population too though. You know what I'm saying? So it's not it's not a group of people that we need to worry about and oh my God, they turning everybody out and, you know what I'm saying? I think they like use a lot of st- scare tactics and, and shit with that shit. I just I think it's overblown. Mm. Yeah, so it did grew from two to three percent to five percent of the population now. Surprisingly. Usually I thought usually with this type of push that I would expect it to be a very tiny growth. I mean, 5% ain't shit, but to see that it went from wherever it was to now 5%, yeah, that's somewhat telling, but, you know, I, we'll see how this is going to progress. But I know one thing, yeah, it's 5% now. Yeah. 5% of the, 5% uh, own 95% of the wealth, though. So a 5% mm-hmm. can do a whole hell of a lot in the world we live in. Financially, <laughs> that's the five percent that controls the ninety five percent. No, no, the ninety five percent and the ninety five percent. What do you mean? Is, what are you talking about? I mean financially. The five percent, the rich, the, the super wealthy elite, the five percent that controls the other ninety five percent, and they're the ones who are putting the gay stuff all on the television. So that five percent is still controlling because the five the homosexuals, that five percent small they they say it's five percent, but whatever percent it really is, they're the ones who are pushing legislation. They just got reparations before <laughs> we got reparations. We supposed to be twelve percent of the population or thirteen or whatever. We didn't get a reparation, but they got it. Why? 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 Is uh, uh, the gay did not get any re- 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 reparations. Thank you. Why are you calling that reparations? Yeah, I don't. Why are you calling? Yeah, that? it was a re- 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 reparations. I don't know why you're calling it something that wasn't. Uh, so what I heard is reparations. Some type of reparations. It's some a tax break. tax break or whatever you want to call. It's they a tax break. It's, 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 it's not reparations. Yeah, but uh, that one, that one. It's, it's a tax, tax break. Yeah. Ta- it's actually tax break. Right. Same damn thing. Like, if we get wet, it be the same thing. It's the same damn energy. Same damn thought process. What's the fact is this? No, it's not. Don't put it like this. They shit. Let me tell you. Oh, on a legal term that was not reparations, Dawah. Let me say it this way. They bypassed reparations talk for the 12% Negroes and went to some damn tax break. For these goddamn homos, they just throw it off. The uh, well, reparations does not always have, is, is not, you know, tax breaks are different than reparations. You, you, you need to look. You need instead of instead of, instead of you trying to look, look at another man's asshole and shit because you because uh, you supposed to be a, a grown a grown a whole grown. Hold on, let me stop this video game for a minute. You supposed you supposed to be a grown man, a grown heterosexual man. Worry worry about another man's blue blue nose. You should be. You should be worried about, you should, you should be researching, you should be researching what this man, is. I have to teach you the way she is on this motherfucker. I have to educate you the terms of, of about 15 minutes ago. Oh, Thank you. you playing a video game with me. Okay, because, so let, 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 let me ask you. You know why? You know why? You know why? You know why? But you know why I have to play, play a video game? Because, 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 because. You are boring to me, dude. You're boring. No, 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 because you nick time. You, you <laughs> because you're boring. boring. That's why you're playing a video game. That's why, because you nick time, fella. You don't like women that like that. So, you know, you, I don't even know what you in the conversation for. You don't like women. <laughs> nick time, man, don't really like women too much. You got a serious problem, fella. Uh, wait a minute. You say, hold on. You said, you said I have a problem with women. But you, you the one for the past hour or so talk about another man's asshole, another one, no, another man's fool. So, 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 so,
Can I ask my brother something bruh, right quick? Don't bruh, say Dawa. Stop, yeah, Dawa. yeah, yeah. What you said, Ty? Yeah, let me let me ask you something right quick. I, I talked to him before back in the day. You probably don't remember, but I, I talked to him before. But my thing is this, though, man, because I hear people talking about this as a um, as a reparations thing, but it's really not. It's just simply giving um, alternative lifestyle couples who was married before 2013 the ability to get their tax returns from that time adjusted based on being married. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not like reparations, we did you wrong, we owe you for this. This is their tax returns being amended. This is money they work for and earn, and it's simply through tax breaks that they're fixing it. But we're not talking about giving them something that they didn't, um, you know, that, that that's promised to them from work that their ancestor did or something like that. This is simply about them being married. So I'm trying to see how is that reparations. Well, okay, maybe I used the wrong word. Is that all right? To say I used the wrong word. It's a task. Right? Yeah, no. Nah, well, yeah, no. Nah, because see, well, what it is, but I think I think that it's been used in a way to trigger some of us to, you know, what I'm saying, start this whole look. They got reparations and we didn't thing. Instead of keeping our eyes on the prize, it kind of take us sidetracked and start an argument about another community getting it, as opposed to us focusing on what's due to us. Oh, I see. No doubt. Yep. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Yes, yes. I always say the same. We reason on a good, you know, to get better clarity. But, yeah, that, that one I've been telling you before is a tax break. And, and on tax, I thought it was in 2015 that they, didn't, they were owed to in 2015 because they made, I think that year they made it legal in all states. I know some of them got married in certain states in America. When I checked it, some people could get married in America before they the um, federal judge made Legal, all states. Was it 2013? Uh, yeah, I think it was 2013. It wasn't. Uh, and that was the first time when it was put into um, the first time it was put into the taxes. Okay. Right. Yeah. So damn, they, they were owed six years. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I can see why the payout was six seven million. Makes sense. I could follow that. But yeah, right. I mean, if we could just go and file for reparations based on work we performed, then I think that would make it equal. But like I said, this they they worded that shit like that to get us in you know in our feelings and shit on this eight oh shit and the reparations conversation. This motherfuckers trying to intellectually abuse us as always. Like, this ain't no fucking mm-hmm. reparations, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, and this, that that's, that brings some clarity. Um, ABC, you there? I know you're there. No, nah, he ran, man. You know, he ain't going to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I guess um, Big J kind of put himself back on mute to play the video game. Uh, uh, no, I, I'm still here. I'm still here. Okay, okay good. good. Well, what, why? Why, why? Why is that, Gary? Because uh, you, uh, you want the opportunity for me on mute? No. There's no need. <laughs> Yeah, that, no, I, I, I know what you're going to do. I know what you're going to do if you're going to use. You wait for the opportunity to do it. Go ahead. Let it rain. Go ahead. Let it out. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Since, since we have this conversation, right, I'm probably the only person on here, the only men on here, except, except for Taz, you know, excluding Taz on this. I'm probably the only man on here who has his own girlfriend called onto the show. Where is your woman at, Gary? You have a girlfriend. I was going to ask. No, no, I wanted to ask about, listen, see, we got a guest. That's rude. I wanted to ask this guy about Paul Mooney. What do you thought about Paul Mooney since he's always talking about No, 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 so I was asking, I was asking your guest because he's always talking about um, anal and all that shit. What he thought about Paul Mooney and all that situation? I said earlier, I thought that uh, when watching Paul Mooney, I've always watched his comments. I've always listened to him because he's real. Right, I've right. always thought, I've always thought that Paul Mooney looked a little gay. Right. So right. hearing this story, uh, I'm not totally surprised. Because I heard Mr. Pride 
and them back in the day having some type of roast or something. And Richard Pryor had confessed to messing with a fat a tranny. He said he would have married him if the dude had to go had to go off and do something. And then he also said that uh, Paul Mooney sucked this executive's penis. Uh, that was trying to get them to do something he wouldn't do, but Paul, Paul Murray just went to him, pulled his pants down, and sucked his thing. He said that on it. On the, then he also said that uh, uh, he had screwed the, the tranny or something. Like I said, he said he's going to marry him. He had said a lot of stuff. You know, and, you know, and he said that uh, basically a lot of people had had sex with Paul Mooney, too, in Hollywood. He said this right on the set, you know, when they were doing a little comedy thing, a promotion or whatever, so. It's not a surprise all the way to me. So I, I, I wouldn't be really surprised if it's really true. I ain't gonna and what about it. that day with Malik Yoba from New York he's Undercover? He's a homosexual. He said yeah, that he's uh, got a tranny girlfriend. They make they making up new shit yeah, talking about some trans yeah, he's yeah, he's he he he's up. Yeah, that's, that's, that's gay, nigga. That's gay. <laughs> that's gay. That's gay. That's he's trying he to make an excuse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he, like, he likes all women, then he's going to put his dude in there and still got a penis out like us a woman. Like, what? What? I ain't never heard nobody do that. He went over and above and beyond. What I've seen some homosexuals that's confess homosexuals do. He went out and said, he, he love women that got penises too. I ain't never know women that got no damn penis. I've never seen one. never heard of that shit. Don't want to see that. If you got a penis, you a dude, unless you're a hermaphrodite. Period. You ain't a hermaphrodite. And you ain't a dude. You ain't got no damn penis. <laughs> ain't no woman got no penis nowhere on this damn planet. I don't want to see that to do. Put it like that. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Man, that's some other shit, man. To even yeah. be able to do that this day and age, though, that shit is some other shit, man, because... It should, you should be able to say, nah, bro, you just gay, man. You know what I'm saying? But you can't even say that shit nowadays. You just got to accept these niggas and their excuses for doing weird shit. Right. But, but you know. God, I think you can that. say something. You can say something. I think it's the consequence in what position or situation they're in for not to say that. Like, you know, there's some people that say what they say. I mean, it depends what platforms they are on, too. So I think it's, it's more of a reputation backlash type of thing versus, you know, somebody that might be in a position that they don't give a fuck and they'll say it how it is. They don't care what's the backlash, if there is any, and just says what they say. But a, a lot of this, when we talk about it, obviously has to do with media, you know what I'm saying, or people that use platforms of the media, and you know, in order to say stuff. And then now you got social media that, you know, they, they, they uh, uh, pander or, or, or you know, want to protect rights or, you know, uh, some people that are in, you know, uh, uh, in those situations, you know, um, don't want to, you know, they, they, they got sense of control of certain platforms. So I think that's where is is a thing of not being able to say something because you can say whatever you want. It's just what position are you in? You know, uh, um, are you in a position that you can say where there's no backlash and, or you in a position like that, you don't care what, what, what comes with it, you know? Mm, I see, I see, I see. But you said some earlier tasks about a lot of these widows. Yeah, you're right. Um, and the problem is a lot of people, especially some of the dudes, when when these dudes come out, they, it seems to me they're giving more praise than anything else, and they the shaming. And I find it very problematic to say, we advocating for this foolishness? I mean, really? I mean... It's, it's, it's getting real out here, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, right. And this is, why, yeah. this is why I spent so much time talking about this for years, because I know it's not this. It's, it's going to keep on progressing. It's going to keep on progressing into something more and more weird before you know it. All of us that are straight will be in a position where we're like, damn, we surrounded by a motherfucker that's ready to, you know, take us out. Because we're going to become the enemy in the mess. If you're straight, you're going to become the enemy. You got pansexual. Janelle Monet came out and said she was a pansexual. Okay. Now, pansexual, that means you shoot anything. You have no restrictions on nothing. It could be animal. It could be male. It could be female. Whatever. 
you screw any damn thing. Period. And this is a what's considered a beautiful indigenous woman. I mean, with an, an impeccable talent as an artist. But goddamn, really? You 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 come out and say you a pansexual, and you know then you have like I say you have Angela Bassett. What is the purpose of Angela Bassett locking lips with Lady Gaga on American Horror Story? This stuff has been going on because they're pushing us towards something. That's why I was been for years. I've been talking about this. It ain't because I got issues and I, I'm homophobic. That shit is retarded. I don't no hell no. I'm not. What am I scared of a female being the fuck? What I'm concerned about is that eventually the heterosexual people are going to be the enemy here. They're already calling us. They got names for heterosexuals too, and that's breeders. So, I mean, yeah. that's what they called us back in the day. You know, a breeder. They call women on the plantation. They call them breeders or something like that. You know what I'm saying? They call us bucks. Where we can make plenty babies. Then they had the buck breaking process. That this is, and it was the homosexual male that. She, well, that was always buck breaking. The indigenous man. See, so it's, yeah. it's getting worse and worse, man. And you got these trannies. That, well, why do? You, why would you need a tranny at a library? You got these people in positions. Can they get in the council? They get on your city council, your local city council, and they start making rules on your local city council. Well, now you have libraries. The libraries are open. So having all across the country to having trannies, men with full beards, every damn thing, and dresses a white dude going up in some black, going up in the library with our children. And it's because mm-hmm. these people have been placed on your local government. So it's, 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 man, if we don't speak out against it as a whole as heterosexual people, we're not going to really be able to complain when they clamp down because they're not going to stop until everybody fully accepts, and I mean fully confesses to accepting homosexuality, lesbianism, as the norm. That's mm. nothing at all wrong. You can't even frown your face. <clears throat> you know, they're going to get to the point where you can't even frown your face about the shit. <laughs> your children will be in trouble if they go to school and speak out against it. Was, it's, it's stuff out now on the Internet. Well, a young yeah, matter of fact, I think it's in California, but I'm not sure. A young sister decided she didn't want to be part of the curriculum that they're forcing on the school. So she opted out, and they suspended her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was so telling wanted her to sit and listen to them talk about this LGBT. They're forcing it down our throat. So, and this is what I've been trying to say on this particular show for years. But see, yeah, I got all, you on that. Oh, so, so, So my question would be, well, what is the pushback, though? Because we can say it, but mm-hmm. how do we in- implement a level of pushback that's comparable to where the messaging is coming from? That's, that's true. I think we're going to have to go to where it's at, take it to the front step. I went, I went to, we have a place in the city I'm in called Out Center, and they push uh, gay pride proms for our children, our youth, our little young, you know, for, they start them off. And they got the advertising in the window when I went there a few years back. The advertising, they start off at 11 years old. I'm like, what the, f- the hell? I couldn't believe it. And it's right across the street from the city hall. And then they have this Jewish dude that they gave charge over our library. He's on the library board as the vice president. And he run, he's the founder of this damn Al Center. So not only do we have the Al Center, but he has access to the children at the library. And this is a 95, oh, excuse me. 85% plus indigenous or black city. So we got to go directly to our city council and, and see what's going on with the LGBT movement in our particular area in order to make, in order to really do something. But on a national level, oh, man, I don't know what we're going to be able to do on a national level. Trump is, is, is busting a lot of pedophile rings, but, I really don't see us doing nothing, you know, on, on, on a national level because most of us Democrats and the Democrats are pushing this thing right down our throat. They, they're the ones that have been – actually, the Democrats have been throwing this homosexual thing down our throat for the last 30, 40, 50 years. The Democratic position in America is homosexual and lesbian or uh, LGBT friendly. It's always been that way. That's the party – 
that accepts the LGBT stuff. That's the party that will allow them to push their ways upon all of us, you see. So we got to go to the local. I'm, I'm right now running for commissioner of my city, but even before then, I went to and I, I went and I protested uh, at the out center itself. I went to the sheriff's department, I mean to the, to the police department, and I got a permit from the chief of police to go there and to protest. I did that twice. Now they, they, they're terrified of me, and they're trying to keep me off the radio, but it's only me that's really pushing and doing the thing against, against and I'm, I'm one of 10,000, a 10,000 uh, population city. I'm one person that's trying to actually do this. So there needs to be more men, I think, and women going to your local city council and talking to them and finding out what's going on with the major homosexual players in the city. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, okay. I agree with you on that, bro. Yeah, man. But, it's crazy, man, because the thing is, when you start to thing is, messing with us, a grown man, I, I ain't really sure, but I don't care, but I don't care, you know, about these homosexuals trying to come to me because I know ain't nothing happening over here. But you got children, bro, that they're influencing. That's, that's the issue right there. This, this is about, to me, it's about, and that's what they want. See, I mean, we have to understand that they can talk all the talk they want to, about LGBT rights and equality and all of that. But the reality is they want to be around children. They yes. have to be around children in order to continue to recruit and to influence children to go that way because some of this stuff we see in the day, we didn't see 15, 20. I didn't see when I was coming up. I'm 48. I didn't see a bunch of lesbian young females. But today you see that. So... Yeah. Somewhere some progress is being made on a negative level, and it's turning our children away from marrying one another and procreating with each other toward the same sex. So we got a major problem. We got to get in on this fight for the children. Mm-hmm. And it's so crazy because when I, when I went and protested against them, these demons was out there <laughs> singing church song, loud as they could, and one of them was claiming two garbage can tops together. Clang, clang, clang. Everything they could do to try to drown me out. But it was one homosexual white man that came down there to the protest, and he brought a, a little brother, a young brother about maybe 10, 11 years old. They had this young brother going in that damn house and giving them uh, cases of water, bringing it out, giving us all these Semen demons, the homosexuals and trans and lesbians that was white, that was down there at the outside. It, it was right in front of my face. Now, I wish I could have had a whole bunch of other brothers and sisters there to see how condescending they are and how they don't care nothing about us or our children. They're about money and pushing their sick agenda on our children. They brought that black little black boy down there to throw me off. That's because this is the second time I've went. The first time they didn't, they didn't know what to do. The second time they was prepared, and they brought this little brother. I'm telling you, it's in the video too. And I'm and I'm going off, and I'm at the little brother coming out. I said, look at how white folks do homosexual. They come to our neighborhood and they put these outsiders and stuff like this around us instead of going around them and and you know establishing this. And then they bring a little black boy here. To show me, yeah, you can talk all you want, but your people are not listening. That's the whole thing I call that. Your people don't hear them. They don't hear hear what you're saying. They're too busy arguing that something is wrong with you to listen to you because they have relatives, friends, what have you, that may be that way. So they're not listening to what the hell you're talking about. And that's the reality of this here. They brought the little brother down there and really Damn, it didn't throw me off, but it really kind of got to me a little bit. I'm telling you, but they're sinister with this plan to get our children. If they weren't, they wouldn't be in the schools making it mandatory. It is natural. You don't have to teach young boys and young girls to like each other. That's natural. But when you have to force it down and throw this homosexual stuff, you know it's not natural. Yeah. You hear me, Dylan? Yeah, I'm here. 
Yeah, yeah, they force us right now, and that's what they do push it move forward. And like always, once they're able to bring put in and what's what entice people that being pedophiles all right, and that's going to take a lot more work. That's when you know it's a complete wrap. And like one brother oh, told me, I think it was it was Art. Art told me so that once the lady comes out and they start broadcasting, say in the public that this is okay, and it's, you know, then you know the only thing is the stage is set, so it's going to be much more. It's going to get worse as time progresses, you know, with this. But let me see who this is on the line. Yeah. Who's this? Can I ask my question now? Yes, um, Sergeant General. Yes, Sarge, ask your question. All right, now I agree with your guest when he says that the most profound cultural change, veritably a usurpation, to happen in the last 20 years has been the ascension of the homosexual activist agenda. There ain't no doubt about it. It's the most profound single thing to happen to the family and cultural life, certainly within 100 years probably. So I agree with you there. But when you were talking earlier, a little bit, a while back, and by the way, for the worse, I think the homosexual activist agenda is definitely for the worse, no doubt about it. Homosexual marriage is a nonsensical proposition. It simply turns logic on its head. It has nothing even to do with religion. It's just a violation of logic. But when you were talking earlier with Big J, and Big J asked you the question, and was questioning, whether or not Jewish men uh, contribute to a predominance of pedophilia, I would submit to you the information is simply not there, not from the place where this information is collated, because they don't keep it by religion. They keep it by race. They keep the statistics by agenda. Caucasian, mm-hmm. generally Jewish men, would more likely than not be lumped in with Caucasian abusers. They wouldn't be kept separately. There's no way to tease it out unless you look at each individual case and look at it and see what it says on the police report. So I'll submit to you that neither you nor I, based upon what I know to be available and my extensive research into the matter, you cannot know the extent to which Jews are pedophiles as opposed to other religious like Episcopalian or Catholic or anything else. They don't keep records that way. And when it comes to determining who is the biggest sexual abuser on the planet, I'd like to refer Big J because he asked the question to a 105-page report done by the East Central and Southern African Health Community. It's called Child Sexual Abuse in Sub-Saharan Africa. It is an extensive report, and it says that out of the 223 million cases of child sexual penetrative abuse reported worldwide, Africa, particularly southern sub-Saharan Africa, has the highest prevalence of child sex abuse, 34.4% of those cases. Europe has the lowest case of abuse, 9.2% of the cases, and America has 10.1%, and Asia, 23.9%. Now, that's from the World Health Organization and from this other report that I just cited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, any response, Dawan? Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't. I don't think he understood or heard what I was saying to him. I was talking about the child mood. I said within the child mood, that somewhere, uh, and the sister came on and eloquently, you know, brought the information on what the child mood really says about, you know, if you if you're a goyim or a gentile or worse than that, you then they can touch a child. But if you're Jewish, then you have to go get permission or whatever to, to, to do with or something like that. That's what I was talking about when I was talking about the Jews. Uh, did and that come that, from the same yes. place where they just kidnap uh, genteel children and make matzo balls or matzo yeah. crackers? Because yeah, I've never heard what, of such That's what uh, That Rabbi, sounds like a blood uh, libel to me, sir. I don't think that's true. You don't think what's true? What well, you just said about uh, it being sanctioned to abuse children that are not Jewish. Oh, well, that's what's in the Talmud, according to what the sister just said, because she used to be, she she is Jewish, not Jewish, but she has Jewish ancestors. So this sister came in from one, uh, from that particular uh, Mm -hmm. race or somewhat and said that this is from what she remembers from being in that particular, you know, 
upsetting. Uh, okay, well, uh, okay, I'm going to have to look into that. But even if that is so, <laughs> are you saying that secular Jews feel themselves bound by that? And that today secular Jews say in the United States will cite that as a justification to sexually abuse children? Uh, yeah, I think they will. I think they will use it to justify it. As a matter of fact, it's information out here right now where you can go on the Internet, you can find Jews sucking babies' penis. That's yeah. game there. I know where uh, that one came from. Okay, I know yeah. where that one came from. Yeah, well, that you know was in the mean, protocols was, of the elders of Zion. I've read it. Right. And so, but I mean, there's videos. Yeah, there, that was a fraud, sir. That was done by the uh, by the Tsarist Cheka just before the Russian Revolution. Right. Well, I'm, I know, I'm talking about that. I mean, it's a fake. It's like you know the Willie Lynch letter. No, no, no. What I'm talking about is these but videos. There was something more recent, kid. and the baby got herpes from it, too. Yeah, yeah several babies have got herpes, and I think several of them have died. <laughs> so these Jewish priests, rabbis, are some of the biggest faggots on the planet. And <laughs> if you look at Hollywood, now, of course, they're not going to record, record this as, as, as them being some of the greatest fans on the planet. But if you're a bug breaker, Look how many men on the plantation. That was that was recorded. How many men did they break on plantation? They didn't record that. You know, they well, so we have Jews it, are no more. Well, I mean, so-called Jews are no more. We, we, we have a we have an enormous scandal, as you know, in the Catholic Church. We have a lot of this scandal going on in many denominations throughout the country. But to single out Jews as being particularly worse than anyone else, I'm very dubious about that. Very. I mean, I, I Isn't that just saying, what I know well, with regard well, to the uh, calumny right against Let's Jews historically? Let's I'm very like this. dubious. Let's put it like this. They are, just, they are just as bad as anybody else. They're not any less. Okay, I might go along with that, but I don't think they should be singled out for any particular program because there are no reliable statistics upon which we can benchmark it. Sorry, let me ask you a serious question. So you you don't believe or that the priests of the Jewish faith um, circumcise the babies and suck the penis of the baby's blood? You know, you never heard that. I've heard that as a cure amongst many ethnic groups for crying children. It isn't just Jews. So you, so you say that. So you, I'm not saying. I'm not saying that some rabbi hasn't true? said that. Maybe they have. You're, you're trying to narrow it down exclusively well, to maybe Jews. Maybe they had, or do they do that? That's the question. No, no, sir, look, let me say what I said. I want to make it clear what I just said. I just said that the idea of sending it out to just Jews or predominantly Jews is probably misbegotten. Because I've heard that remedy espoused by other ethnic groups than Jews. Okay. What remedy? What, 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 what you mean, remedy? A remedy for what? They, these these well, babies. Child I've never heard of this. So what? What other ethnic groups uh, have you heard right. that this is practiced? Right. Yeah. Just about everyone I can think of at one time or another. Man. I've, 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 had, I've been involved as a policeman in a case of this sort of child abuse, and I believe the people involved were Baptists, as I remember. So, so they were circumcising a baby, and on the eighth day, they sucked the blood. When the child the was crying in order to calm the child down, yes. They Do said that. at their trial, this was something that they were told that they'd been raised with. This was a way to calm the baby down. Well, maybe wow. they weren't Jewish. Maybe, maybe they, they weren't Jewish, Jewish or they were Baptists. Oh, did they have Jewish ancestry? That's I don't know. That's I, they were Baptists, and they said oh, wow. that. And they were Baptists. Well, I, never I don't know if they have Jewish before. ancestry. I ain't never. All heard I know is, is that the people that were involved in the trial that were being prosecuted for criminal, uh, aggravated criminal sexual abuse of a child were Baptists. Okay, well, okay, you got plenty. I know we got plenty of evil people with all religions. Yes, that's but, the point. But 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 I, well, there's no way we can negate the evil as Jews. Because I don't think we can negate, negate yeah. any evil from any group. 
which okay. singles okay. them out as being well, particularly more pernicious than others, that in and of itself is pernicious. Could be. But if you ask a lot of Hollywood people that have been in Hollywood, they talk about them Jewish executives. A lot yeah. of black men today that are rappers or that wanted to become rappers or entertainers or singers or whatever, they talk about these Jews and how they get down. And I don't think these people are just saying this stuff just to be saying it. Oh, no, yeah. they're, they're there. I agree they're with you there. Of, yeah, so, so and Jews, are, Jews have a way of erasing a lot of information, too. Jews, yeah, I, but I look, the, the people who got a yeah. stranglehold on the, on the movie business were Jews. They pretty much started it. Right. So, I mean, the, most of the people who inherited the positions and uh, were trained by other Jews, they, look, powerful people in powerful positions abuse their authority and frequently use sex as they do it. Look at Bill Clinton. He ain't Jewish a bit. I mean, this is what people do. People, when people get in positions of power, they frequently use sex as a weapon of authority. It's nothing new, and Jewish producers in Hollywood are no exception to the rule. Well, you know, uh, Jewish, Jewish people ain't number white folks. And if you narrow it down to it, I mean, white folks, period. White men have been known to be faggots. <laughs> I okay. mean, it's just... I okay, mean, it's but just how will we explain R. Kelly? Oh, well, you know, I, I <laughs> what do you mean? How we you know, I mean, look, any, look, look, evil, like you said, man, you said it best just not long ago. Evil is spread. It's part of the human condition. It's part of human nature. Evil is as much a part of human nature as is good. Not I mean, and it's spread, not. distributed roughly equally throughout all groups of people. Now, this evil, this evil that you went say this is totally something. Far beyond the eyes of man could witness. This is something totally different, my dude. You know what I'm saying? Our Kelly, Culture our may Kelly. be different. Hold on. Wait, you you that one? He mentioned R. Kelly, but R. Kelly was allowed to do what he did by white men who put him in the industry. Exactly. They knew how sick he was when they put him there, I'm pretty sure, because I'm pretty sure they heard his story. And they like sick and demented people. They need sick and demented people, people who are sick and who have been hurt, people who will allow them to, to allow themselves to get on the cast and cast because their parents never came up the bottom of nowhere. You know, because the relatives never care. They they prey on people of that type of energy in the first place. People have had traumatic situations because these people they they're diabolical when it comes down to how the psychology of actors and all this type of stuff. They have you have to be able to have a certain amount of pain to even get on stage and draw tears, and you know you have to go to certain places of terrible places in your life where you're acting and all that stuff to, 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 to get those kids out of, or to be at, you become the one that actually gets the part. You have to go to a certain place, there's chambers in the mind, all this stuff that these demons have been working on it and perfecting. You see what I'm saying? For years. Yeah. These, and it's these white folks. It's them damn white folks, period. I don't care whether it's Denmark, God damn it, or whether it's America. Or whether it's Ger- or, or Germany, it makes no difference. German Jews, they, these people are just germs. That's, you know what I'm saying? And you mentioned R. Kelly again. R. Kelly used a German story to call himself the Pied Piper. That's a German story. That's a German boy story that he used. So if you miss anybody in Hollywood, they come under the direct uh, direction of the directors, which is the damn Jews. Whether they sing or act, it makes no difference. So anytime you mention somebody black in Hollywood, you got to go to somebody white that gave them the opportunity in the first place. Because we don't run Hollywood. White mm-hmm. folks do. We just be in it. Yeah. I agree. I agree. All right, Sarah, an open mic. Okay, well, like I said, I think with the opportunities opening up to black people, you're going to see a lot more of Bill Cosby as a pedophile. Well, look, uh, human nature is human nature. Black people are no more ne- immune from the evils of human nature than any other group. All they need is the opportunity to exercise it. And if they obtain them, they will do it. It will be comparable. Believe me, it's not going to be any different. Well, I'll tell and you and what, again, if you want to look at rates of pedophilia wait, worldwide, wait, according wait. to 
the best the best statistics we have, the worst place in the world is sub Saharan Africa. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They said that America is the number one purchaser of younger age women and sex in general. Um, Think um, about that. that Ooh, they said, listen, listen, you could look this up and this is this is on record. Listen. America is the number one purchaser for illegal sex, all right, for pornography, as well as worldwide and all these guys that be going to fucking different countries like Asia, Sarge, and all these places getting underage women is American. So if right. someone's not paying for it, then it's not sexual child abuse, right? If they just rape the child, that's Sarge, not that Sarge, Sarge, only, in it general. only counts to you if they purchase and, it. No, no, no. In but is general, that what Sarge, you just said? That even if that is Sarge, true, that Sarge, does not mean the numbers Sarge, are not there. Sarge. You, you, you're trying to play. They pay I'm not trying not to play. I'm for for me, general. child sexual abuse is child sexual abuse, whether you pay for it or whether you take it back for it. And I'm going to tell you again that America is number one in that. Okay, good. Okay? Then I'll accept okay. that right now until I find out differently. You shouldn't accept But again, it. I'm saying it's by numbers, the worst place is in Africa. Sarge, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable okay, here. It's look, unacceptable we can agree to that. Anywhere. We can agree to that. We'll and agree. I was going to ask you real quick, and, and the brother that he's here already as a guest, uh, and you, Sarge, what do you think about that incident when Rudy Giuliani and your president, Donald Trump, got all dressed up and they were wow. dancing around and kissing and all that shit? What was all that about? All right. Huh? I, I haven't seen it. Oh, I don't know what you're talking oh, about. And I, I oh, you don't know you. what I'm talking about. You know okay. I don't trust you. I got to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, oh, you're going to see it for yourself. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Where do are. I go to see this? Go online. You, know you did on. put them up, dressing up like that. Where do I go to see Just for type myself? Up Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani dressed up as women. It'll pop up. It's All right. right. Myself, and then I can answer your question because right now I can't. Well, why don't you go look at that and then you tell me after five minutes of looking at homo ass, you come back and tell me your. Okay, yo, and yo. I want you to look up where I told you to look up that. Re- All right, this is what I'm going to do. Jay, you there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. This, this, this was recent? Cause this is something new. I didn't no, no, no. This is, this, is, this is a while back. This is before he became president. This is, this, this is not nothing, though. It's not that oh, one. So but I saw that too. I saw oh, that too. You saw okay. Well, sir, yeah. you got some homework to do. You got to look that up, brother. Before the rest of and the, the reason why I bring that because you see, he's the, uh, uh, Sarge brings himself as a masculine man, and it is that the other. He's against all this yeah. shit. But the president that he worships is into that lifestyle. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, like that. And, and, and it doesn't make, hey, to each his own. If he wants to be it, but I just want clarification because Sarge plays games. That's all. He plays yeah. games. That's all. That's the only reason why I'm, I'm pre- pointing that out because he's talking all that heavy shit right now, but he's worshiping and he looks up to and he respects this dude that likes wow. dressing up in a dress. Wow. Right. wow. I opened a new line. Who's this? Guys, what's going on? Good evening, everybody. How y'all doing? I'm just sitting back and uh, I just had to press the button. Damn, man. Trump, Trump and Giuliani, uh, uh, tongue kissing and shit, sucking each other's ass. What's going on, yeah? <laughs> That's I didn't know that. Video. Like I said, I don't want to. I don't want to um, make it like it's a brand new video. It's, it's been there for years. But oh, it's, okay. I'll tell you, it's there. Yeah, you probably okay. see it if you haven't. It's, it's it's definitely there. That's all. Yeah. yeah. So what's the title of this for tonight? Hey, guy, are you, are you, are you uh, going to end the show at 12 o'clock or? Um, well, all facts. The title for tonight is Sarge Vegas. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heterophobia. Oh, wow. Now, what phobia is that? Shit. Um, for, to run down, it's just you could Google this or Wikipedia's definition, is the opposite. Like, you know, people say people are homophobia, homophobic. It's the opposite. Straight oh, here are all, okay, right, right. And, you know, and it, I guess that is, you know, but I, I did, to go on and talk, it was a disgrace for the homosexual community to get upset with a heterosexual pride uh, uh, march. And uh, I think it was Pennsylvania Philadelphia. 
And that's so hypocritical. Right, right, right. We have we, we have a right to say I'm proud to be heterosexual. I'm proud to be a mother and a father. The family structure, the traditional family. You know, just like someone can say, you know what, I'm proud of you know coming out with my new sexual identity. Everybody has to be proud, but the but when the homosexual community sit up there saying, I think I heard Don Lemon say, um, well, you know, um, we understand, um, you know, the heterosexuals, y'all don't have to, y'all not depressed, or y'all, y'all, y'all guys are not, um, you know, people don't kill you for your uh, sexuality, so y'all should not be having a parade and all this type of stuff, and then the other side says, you know, we're just trying to poke it in the homosexual space and things of that nature. No, everyone has a right to have their own fucking proud month of March. It's just that simple. Don't overanalyze it and let the heterosexuals do what they do. Because if the heterosexuals have to sit there, there and watch gay men Go down Martin Luther King Boulevard and their little gay prides and things of that nature, half naked with their makeup on. You can see the classes and all that. And when we're driving by, we have to suck it up. They should suck it up, despite what anything has to say. And to me, that is totally fucking ridiculous what they did. And, they, and, and, and homosexuals, if you're listening and you agree with that, and you have that ideology I, 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 like that, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's totally ridiculous. It's totally fucking ridiculous. And, and, and it's sad as shit. And you, you have some people say, well, they're just having it because they're just trying to poke fun of the gays or uh, they're, they're just trying to send another message. You know, it's, it's basically, it's a uh, hateful uh, a homosexual march. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I am celebrating that my heterosexual sex. I'm celebrating that I love to put my penis in some wet vagina. That's what I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating that I can massage my woman's back. I'm celebrating uh, I want her back when we take a nice shower together. I am celebrating the times we're in that jacuzzi. Oh, I love it. That's what I'm celebrating, me and her. I'm celebrating that we can have a biological children together. I'm celebrating that. That's what I'm celebrating, that I'm proud that I am that. Yeah. I'm proud, you know, you know, things of that nature. I'm proud of that because we have to do that nowadays because there's different groups. First, it was only one group. Now, if it was only uh, uh, no other groups out there, when it comes to sexual identity, then you say, dumb motherfucker, you already, what the fuck you proud for? It's, it's a given. No, it's not a given now. People are not, people are, the people will say they're born a certain way. Okay, you're born a certain way, and then you're different. Golly, well, if, if it's natural, there are a lot of gay people born a certain way. Well, it's natural that, you know, everybody may not be born heterosexual. So I'm celebrating that when God rolled the dice, bam, my number seven came, my motherfucker. I'm heterosexual. When he rolled that, bam, my number seven came up on that goddamn dice and I'm heterosexual. You want to go in and celebrate, bam, snake eyes on the roll of goddamn dice. Bam! One and two on the goddamn guys. Goddamn, you crapped out, motherfucker. That's what you want to celebrate. Celebrate because you could have buried the horn. You know what I mean, bro? You could have buried the horn. You could have buried the hard six. Your hard six came out. Bam! You know what I'm saying? Come on now, yo. So um, I bet that hard four, and I came out, hey, you know what I mean? The you know, <laughs> 22 came out. I'm, you know what I'm saying? So, um... Yeah, that's all I wanted to say, man. And that's just my opinion. And if you don't like it, you just don't like it. But that's, that's all I got to say for the topic, man. That's it, brother. Did you say Don Lemon? Yeah, Don Lemon was talking about, oh, yeah, Don, Don Lemon was talking about, 
old. They're just, uh, you know, uh, 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 trying to spite and trying to uh, discriminate against the gay, me and your gay or uh, heterosexual pride, mom. Get the fuck out of here, man. And guess what? He just got married. He just got married. Wow. He just got married. Listen, I have no problem with you, you know. I mean, when you say you're gay to another man, when you say you're gay to another man, you, you tell the world, yes, I mean, I mean, you suck dick and you, you know what I mean, you, 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 I mean, you, you, I mean, you do what you, I mean, you eat pussy, you suck dick, and you take it in the ass and all that type of stuff, and guess what? We realize that and we're just going to go ahead and do what you got to do. I respect homosexuals. I work around homosexuals, but goddamn, you're not gonna sit up there and I and, 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 and I can't hold my wife's hand in public, but she can go in and kiss yours. Come on, y'all. I'm a I'm a hug my. I listen. I tell a woman I'm done at this. When I get into a serious relationship again, a real serious relationship again, I'm saying y'all know I'm talking about real serious, yo. Well, though, shit, here, baby, you hit the wallet. Fuck it. Here, here's my whole mama. That's what I'm talking about. Right? right. Yes, when we go out, we're going to hold hands. I want to let her know. I want us to hold hands and shit. I want to let the world know that you're my woman. I'm your man. We're going to hold hands. We're going to make that statement. We're going to take it back to the old days. Or I'm going to put I'm, 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 I'm my arm around you. Don't be uncomfortable. I don't want you to be uncomfortable around me and goddamn public. We're going to hold hands because we're going to show the world that we love each other and we got a good relationship for all this shit up out of here. That's how we're going to show our heterosexual pride and let people who look at us and say, goddamn, they're holding hands or things of that nature. Damn right. I want to go back to the motherfucking old school. That's just me personally. Shit, fuck that shit, man. Yeah, man, come on, man. Shit, all this marriage and divorce and all this bullshit, and then they criticize heterosexual marriages and things of that nature. No, man. So, like I said, I had no problem with homosexuals. Some of my wardrobe is, is, is made by homosexuality, but for the homosexuals to come out and start getting jealous and start getting uncomfortable because we're saying, yo, I'm glad I'm, you know what I'm saying, I'm glad, I, I'm making sure I'm glad I'm born heterosexual. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad I was born heterosexual. I'm glad. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of that. What the fuck? That doesn't mean I hate you. That don't mean I hate you, but I'll fall back, yo. So all the homosexuals out there, you know, uh, listen to me now, man. I can work with you. You know what I mean? I'm quite sure you, when I went to the restaurant, you were a chef. You cooked me some nice flat meals. You know what I'm saying? But don't. And, 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 and what I'm saying, most homosexuals don't go here, and they can say, man, hey, what's going to do with the fuck y'all want? Most homosexuals, I agree, but you got the little small fraction in every fucking group that want to start some shit. They want to polarize some shit and get shit popping. You know what I'm saying? You always got somebody that's going to, you know, you already, look, if you got five children, y'all go out, you always going to have one child to show off. He ain't know he ain't not gonna know how to act. There's one child you're gonna be motherfucking worried about. Whether he's gonna start the motherfucking show, that's the one you gotta watch. And, 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 and you know, that's just my opinion, guys. But I'm gonna fall back into the uh the uh after hour show, man. I'm gonna fall back. And um guess, man, um nice to hear from you, man. I see that you still alive, man, you still kicking and you doing what you gotta do. Um but that's it, man. That's what I gotta do, brother. I'm done. Where you at, Gary? Damn, I didn't talk, Gary. I was a goddamn show. My God. All right. Um, what? Hold on. Oh, you sleep? No, I'm back. I'm back. Um, What's up, Gary, man? We missed you last week, man. You got to stop doing this, man. You can't be spoiling us and shit. You know what I mean? We get used to you, and then you don't want to have a show and shit, man. Come on now. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, fuck. I hope I'm not the only one now doing shows on this platform now. I'm feeling I'm the No, on Sunday's your show. No, when they get listen, man, we're addicted to Sunday nights, man. Come on, yo. You can't, man. Come on, man. You got to give us a fast notice at least. Um, I, I have to take off and there's something else. I mean, there's one to the I know. I'm fucking with you, guy. I'm fucking with you, brother. Just fucking with you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. All right. That one. Yeah. Um, we're going to come to almost to the end of this. But any anyway, other... Right. 
and and any other um things that that you want to say that or you said anything that that's left on your mind right now. Yeah, um, I, I want I want to be clear and lay out anything else. Oh yeah, one other thing that did came to my mind. Um, so I can remember. Um. No, you go ahead. That one, it'll come to me. No, nah, man, I just wanted to, I just wanted to say that uh, I've been on TRS for years. I don't know how long I it's been. Three, four, five. I don't know. It's probably, it probably maybe oh, oh, almost close to five years, maybe four. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure it was about, just me or with um. That was Renee. I started off, I think, with Renee. Yeah, on it's probably longer. Oh man, it's, it's been it's been it's been a good little while, yeah. and um, oh, usually, I know, usually. Now I remember. Now I remember. Okay. I'm sorry to cut you off. Go ahead. There was a piece by Dave Chappelle, and he's getting a lot of pushback. Oh yeah. We're gonna talk about this. This is the last thing we're gonna talk about before we wrap it up. Your take on that? Okay. And from what part? Because, I mean, he, he snapped on several groups and seemed to be... Well, 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 from what I find out now, a lot of the people from the LGBT community are attacking him. Hell, even, I think they're trying to get that special taken off the air. You know how yeah. this go when you talk about... Yeah. Oh, yeah. One thing is because he's talking about, say, the word, using the word, the faggot, and it's Use it and say they say you can't use this word, right? Mm-hmm. But he explains in his skit that say, okay, but why cannot? It's because you're not gay. Well, he come and rebuts say, well, I'm not a nigga either. A lot of people laugh and us, but then get the concept that it's okay for a black man to degrade himself and call himself a nigga, but when it comes to really using the f word towards the LGBT, it's a problem. And it, it it goes to show that even tonight, there are certain things you do not say as any person. You can't make no remarks to people that are like, you know, the Jewish faith that runs the industries and people that are homosexual. You can everything else you can say is cool, but in regards to make any remarks of those two, you have a problem. You get me? And oh, that's yeah. why he's getting attacked because he made that remark. You know? Mm-hmm. So, in regards to your take on it, and m- mind you, before I heard about it, I went and watched the special myself last week. I find his skit in the whole um, comedy that night when I watched it was very funny. It was entertaining, and I learned something. <laughs> But a lot of people, they get away from the message who like comedy. You see, when people are displaying any form of message, they use it a form of satire or a form of right. humor, humor to draw a point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But because we live today in the world we live in today, everybody's trying to be very censored and play nice with certain language to certain set of people. I have a problem with that, you know? Right, because if it, if a person that express any word, it better be in the form that you are gonna learn something. I could take besides the insult. Let me call people niggas for centuries. Right, and now it's not anything stimulating or anything you can learn out of it. It's usually when people use the word nigger and any skit is in a form of entertaining. Right, more than a degrading. Mm-hmm. At times, if, you, if if there was punishment for any person using the word nigga to quote unquote black people, usually there'll be a sense of where you you'll be you will not get um, placed into certain positions. Hell, you'll be you'll be banned. You'll lose resource in regards to income. There will be a sense yeah. of big punishment for your actions. No, we don't have that. But when you say in in regards to the LGBT, there is a sense of consequences. We know that Kevin Hart suffered those consequences, and really what he suffered was something that 
he dealt a decade ago. Uh-huh. So it seemed to me that not only that you're trying to soften up your behavior, but you don't want nobody to call it out. Definitely not. Because people call it out, there is a form of a shame. Some people say that some people commit suicide because they don't like the reality of way how they live. So to me, to those that do have those thoughts or have done it, it seems to me that there's something wrong with you psychologically. And if you do not take the necessary precautions to get proper help, that is on you at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Because one thing is proven when it comes to our people, we are afraid to get proper help. We don't want to see no profession for our illness mentally. I know it costs money, but at the end of the day, what is the what is it worth for your sanity, for your health mentally moving forward? Because it's proven when you hold things in for years after years for any trauma, it creeps up on you within time. You get me that one? Yeah. And it, 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 what it does, it creates a monster inside you. It creates that inner demon that you will so un- unleash with the right wording. You mm-hmm. get me? Mm-hmm. I see some people that explode when somebody calls certain people certain things. I remember there was a basketball player named Keon Doolin, but he was molested when he was a boy. When that person touched him in a way, that actually brushed him or might have said something, he went through, he went through a rage, verbally wow. and physically. Why that happened? Because the un unkept trauma that he suffered when he was born was never dealt with. He went to see help now, but this is the point I'm trying to bring out. Once you don't treat something, the only thing will happen to and then it, the disease will manifest. It'll grow like a cancer. And once it reaches its threshold, you will explode. Right. So that's the point I want you to get clarity that, you know, words do hurt. Um, and people are going through certain traumas, but they, it's the responsibility for you as a, once you reach an adult, if you didn't get the help when you were younger, it makes, it's, it's in your right to go seek help now. Do not live throughout your days with un, un, unkept trauma. It will not help you. you. It will not, you will not, matter of fact, today how things are now, I'm surprised more people are not going for suicide in this, in this Western culture. Right. Because all they promote is death. And if you die either by somebody, by other people or by your own your own means, it's a problem. Right. It's a problem. So yeah. That's what I wanna say. Um um any anything else you wanna say in regards to, you know, closing remarks? Uh no, like I was saying, uh, I just wanted to uh say uh, thank you for another opportunity and this has been I haven't had to really go off too much this time it seems like you know this this thing has taken a hold of us to a point now I think we understand I think, I think we kind of like get it now that we got to really as all of us get out here and try to do something because these these LGBT individuals are not going to stop and it's like um they're going to push you to the point where it's going to be criminal damn there <laughs> to be heterosexual or to claim heterosexuality. You know, just like it used to be criminal for sodomy and all that type of stuff in certain states and things. They push you into late heterosexuality, I believe, uh, a legal issue. Uh, they push you into making where we have to fight for rights to get married. I think if it's like they've had to fight for rights too. I mean, a lot of this is still with the facts. Uh, the, the people the people that's pushing this movement mostly are European. And then we have some of our own people that jumped on the bandwagon because some of our own people have been dealt with when they were children. That's, we have to deal with the fact that molestation plays a big role in what we see with this LGBT movement. And mm-hmm. what we have heard ourselves that is we have not given an outlet for our own children. 
uh, after they've been left, they don't have an outlet at church, but they can't go to the church and get no nobody to help them at church. It just don't. It just don't. It ain't gonna happen. You can't get it in the household, no group setting, none of that stuff. So they, like you said, when somebody touched that young brother, he went off. See, because we don't uh, heal our children when they've been traumatized through molestation. That's a big mm-hmm. problem within us. I'm not concerned about other people when they come around that right now. And what I'm saying right now, I'm trying to deal with the molestation that we have allowed within our own ranks. And I think this is why our people are jumping on the bandwagon or have jumped on the LGBT movement bandwagon because they couldn't get no assistance from us. And, you know, and so they go over there and these people who are readily happy and waiting on black people who have been traumatized like this, so they know, just like they have been traumatized that way, they know it's easy for them to, to continue on once they've been touched. They just keep on touching and touching and keep on touching and touching. And they know if we do the same thing and nobody heals us in our setting, then the children going to come right over to them. And they're right there with open arms waiting on the children that we've hurt. That's mm-hmm. not what we have to really deal with molestation among our ranks. They can't go swept. They can't be swept on the rug. And the ugly thing about it is sometimes a man can molest a, a young girl and that young girl will become a lesbian. Yeah. yeah. Not there, to, there, there not to cases of that too. Right. And so sometimes when young women, now women sometimes mess with young boys. And sometimes the young boys become gay because of that. They don't want a woman touching them. It, 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 it can go either way. And sometimes when a man rape a boy, that boy may become a homosexual or not. Or mm-hmm. sometimes when a woman rape a boy, he may become gay or he may become, he may, or not. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We never know what's going to happen. But there's always an effect, even if the person doesn't turn toward the same sex when you molest the children. I'm just trying to get the people to understand that. I've been really tapping on molestation. These years I've been talking... I'm really getting to the root cause of this LGBT thing, thing, thing among us, and I believe it's the molestation, and we need to come back maybe one time outside of Washington Hampton and talk about the Depot Provera, the government's way of uh, chemically inducing black women and, and getting to the babies in their wombs. Because people don't even talk, we don't talk about that, but one day we should come and talk about what Depo Provera has done to create a homosexual and lesbian and transgender scene among our youth, because that's what happened. They gave our women Depo Provera, and they didn't tell them that the children that you get pregnant with after you get off the Depo will possibly be gay from the Depo. They never okay. talked about that. So I, and I didn't know that when I first started doing these shows. So now I've learned that so I can add that to the conversations, you know, that we have in All the right. future. About it. Okay. We can I appreciate that. it. All right. I appreciate yeah. your time. And, you know, you can call in to, or you can stay on for the after hour, like always. I'm sure. Sure. But, I know. um, oh, oh, hold on. Stay on live for a second now. Let me see who this is. Who's this? Yeah. Hello? Hi. No, this is Gigi. I dropped, so I called back in. All right. Stay on live, Gigi. All right, everybody. I'd like to thank everybody for calling in to tonight's um, show. Um, if you miss this show, you can catch a replay of this. Um, and be on the lookout for the next stream. Other than that, thank you for listening. Take care now. Good night. Comment, subscribe, and like the stream. And catch all other previous episodes on Chaos Ray channel. And like always, let the chaos rain.